Hello, Janksters, and welcome to another edition of the Magic Jank Podcast, the show where members of Team Magic Jank get together every week and we talk about the goings-on in Magic the Gathering and the community at large. Uh, my name is Graham. I go by Hamox42 on the internet, and I'm joined by the one and only Damien F16. Damien, how we doing, man? I am good. Um, I just drove back from uh, the States today. I crossed the border. Oh, no it was uh, mostly uneventful, which is nice. Uh, always uh, uneventful at the border. That's That's what you want. And that's, that's uh, it was fun. Yep. Went went to Seattle and uh, just got back. And uh, I'd never been there before, but it's it's similar in a lot of ways to to where I live in in Vancouver. So had a nice little trip. But uh, yeah, that was my weekend. How how are you doing? What's up? Fantastic. Um, you know, I'm also uneventful. Uh, but n- not even as exciting as international travel, albeit fairly. <laughs> you know, <laughs> not three not hour drive. Exotic. Two inter- hour drive. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know I find it funny international yeah. travel, you know, referring to, you know, the United States Canada border because it is what it is. But it's it's funny mm-hmm. living just out of Detroit. I have literally been on a freeway at one point and I had to change lanes. Otherwise, like if somebody hadn't let me scoot back over, I would have found my way into customs going on my way into Canada <laughs> accidentally. So, you know, like I, I'm there also are worse just, places to, to end oh, up accidentally, of all the places so to randomly the end up. <laughs> yeah, 100 no, percent. <laughs> and I didn't have anything crazy in the car or anything. It would have been fine. Just would have been a bit of a delay. Yeah. To where I was trying to get to, but anyway. yeah, a little bit of a detour. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. So things have been relatively uneventful at my end as well. But uh, I have been uh, brewing up a storm right now in on Arena, and uh, that's definitely something that we want to talk about because foundations dropped hmm. this past week, and with it, you know, we've been talking about it for a couple of weeks, and there's been a lot of. Um, a lot of hoopla and a lot of excitement. So we're going to be talking about that uh, quite a bit today. But there's another kind of big change that's happened this week that I, I definitely want to touch on at the top because uh, it's mm-hmm. relevant. So if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably somewhat invested in magic uh, and the magic community as a whole, right? And uh, one thing that, you know, it's, as a content creator for the last couple of years, uh, you know, you and I have both been aware of uh, so many different social media platforms and everything. And... Oh, yeah. uh, for reasons that we don't need to, you know, for non-magic reasons that we don't need to go into too much about, um, a lot of feelings have uh, have cropped up around Twitter and uh, X, oh, as yeah. it's known now. And uh, this past week, there has been a massive migration in, across a lot of different, you know, interests, but magic is among them, uh, from Twitter to a different platform called Blue Sky. And the reason that I want to mm-hmm. call that out specifically and talk about it is because um, I think this one's going to stick. You know, o- over the last couple of months, there have been there's been chatter about Blue Sky. There have been chatter about a bunch of other platforms that people are trying to move to. And, uh, there's this migration seems to be, uh, I'm seeing way more activity on that platform, um, than I have on any other that I've, where people have, where there's been chatter about. And to give you an idea at the start of this week, I had under 200 followers over there. I also had about, you know, I don't know, 10 posts or whatever. So the fact that I actually had any following over there was already a win in my book. Um, right. But today, like right now, I have over 700. And that's just in a week where I haven't even been super active on the platform. Um, Yeah. And there are other magic content creators who uh, who I've heard say that they've gotten you know upwards of a thousand follows in a single day. You know, people who had larger thing. Exactly. Yeah, people who have had larger, larger followings on, you know, over on Twitter, you know, the, the, right. the their audience is, has clearly moved on to Blue Sky. Um, mm-hmm. And I, for the, you know, I'm not trying to claim that the, you know, everybody who's following me got me, you know, found me specifically. But one thing that the platform does is uh, there are these starter packs that people can make where they actually put together a collection oh, of people yeah, in a category. I've seen it. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and I've gotten, I, I've been fortunate enough to be picked up in a couple of the magic creators. <laughs> You're and in it's a just starter like, deck. I mean, oh my I've god, been a, Ham! I know, You're like an invitational Woo-hoo. card. I know, kind of, right? It feels really, it's, it's really, um, I don't know, it's, it's rewarding to, for sure. But it's just like, yeah. you know, so you, when you go over there, you might see a post that says, "Here are 300 magic content creators you should probably be following," and there's yeah. a little follow all button. Well, people are using those, and they're getting, you know, they're seeded into these communities, and. Uh, it's pretty cool. So, yeah. <laughs> well, so, and, yeah. the, and like I said, the algorithm does its thing. I mean, you're going to mm-hmm. get recommended other people who are uh, magic players who are on Blue Sky are going to get recommended other magic players to follow. And like you said, it's just going to, yeah, it's how it works. That's, yeah, social yeah. media. Now, it's funny from, from my perspective, you know, I never really used Twitter. 
I didn't mm-hmm. like um, Twitter. I, I used to live in sure. Asia for a lot of people who might not know that. I lived there for almost 15 years. And over there, um, you know, I was there from before kind of smartphones got invented to right up to 2020 when, you know, they're in everybody's hands. And over there, it's like on another level, like five-year-old kids have like the latest, you know, iPhone and stuff. But, um, you know, just watching all the selfies and all the, you know, it's it, it like kind of take over over there and just like become mm-hmm. such a like, it's wild over there. It's It's, you know, everybody's... You look around the restaurant, it's like everybody's literally sitting there taking pictures of their food, yeah. you know, putting it on Twitter, putting it on Instagram, whatever. And so I was just like, oh, I despise all this, you know. I used Facebook, I, I used social media because I was living abroad and it was the easiest way to keep in touch with my family. But when I moved back to Canada, I, I, got, I got just stopped using Facebook entirely and it was great. I'm so glad to be off, off of there. <laughs> Twitter, though, I never really used even to begin with. And, you know, maybe, you know, you could argue back, uh, you know, maybe before Elon Musk bought it or what have you. It was better mm-hmm. or, or worse. I think it was still had all kinds of issues even back then. It's gotten sure. worse by all accounts. I, again, I don't really use it. But when I became a content and creator you know originally i was a variety streamer and i i you have to just go on all these platforms and try and you know get uh, you know so i at, initially i was posting a little bit on instagram i was posting a little bit on twitter but very quickly i was just like ugh just i i just have a bot auto posting when i stream and that's it that's my twitter account mm-hmm. and i didn't care you know how many twitter followers or whatever else i had right. I, irrelevant but then, you know, a bunch of people uh, were on Blue Sky and they said, you know, like, uh, now it's kind of what you mentioned, this kind of, like, influx of people. Maybe now's the time to, you know, let's start using it. So I, I also made a Blue Sky account, uh, you know, a few months back or mm-hmm. I don't even, maybe last year when it was uh, invite only or whatever. I, I right. got my name and I just saved it, but I never really used it. But a couple or a week ago, I just basically said, I'm going to start using this thing. And I started like, I don't know how often I'm supposed to post. I post like once every few days. I know there's people who are just like eight times a day. They're just like, mm-hmm. you know, but yeah, so it's been interesting. Um, but, you know, it is nice. What I was going to say, like to bring this back around to magic and how it's connected to magic, um, you know, as a content creator, it's nice. But as a, just, just as a magic player, there's so much discussion happening on platforms like Twitter for our niche hobby, this game that we love. And not being in that sphere does feel a little bit like you're on the outside looking in and you get your information almost secondhand. Twitter's where people are learning things, like seeing deck lists. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing, you know, links to people's tweets that people are posting. I look at Fire Shoes, you know, deck list or this yep. for blah, 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 you know, all this kind of stuff. And, you know, also pair that with the fact that Wizards is so bad at communicating and, and <laughs> making things clear. It's far easier to find a tweet from Fire Shoes or somebody talking about the schedules and events and everything, you know, than to try and find it yourself on Wizards' website. <laughs> so, you know, not being on there, I always kind of felt like, you know, but I was so adjacent to that information that I didn't feel like I was too out of the loop. But now that, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I really want to see a lot of the Magic community come over to a better platform. Um and, uh, you know, because, again, I'm not on Twitter all the, or X all the time, but I hear things and I see things. And I'm just like, oh, my God, well, how is anybody it, still on this platform? It, but, it's pretty rough. Yes. Yeah. So, well, and, and over the last it's funny because um, in the last couple of weeks, like I, I passed a certain follower milestone over there and I didn't even feel particularly good about it because I was hmm. less active. And it was very clear that a lot of the activity was just bots. Like, bots. Uh, yeah. Like genuine, yeah. not messing around bots. Crazy. Like it was very yeah. clear that these were not human beings who were interacting with things. And uh, that's yeah. problematic that's, on a whole. That's what will destroy. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. That's a huge problem. It has to be oh, reined yeah. in. Anyway, we could yeah. talk about social media and, we, the, oh, and the, the, the ills not, and pitfalls of it. <laughs> it, it does, and whether or not it's a good thing in general, that's a whole other can of worms. That is absolutely a sure. f- fair point. It sounds like you and I are more or less alike on that, to be honest. But oh, yeah, yeah. We don't need to go too deep into that. But, but it's useful. If you are it's looking, useful. It, it can be, yeah. absolutely. The, the ability yeah. to share information so quickly or even as a content creator, like I'll, I'll have just a, a joke that'll occur yeah. to me and it's like yeah i can say it on a stream and it's this ephemeral moment and that's fun and sure of course i do that but the idea of having a place where i can just like throw a stupid pun out and just let it exist <laughs> and then move on you know that's kind of nice yeah. i like being able to do that in my off hours it's it's handy yeah. um that's you know the there's internet a, there's was a... created for <laughs> right well and <laughs> and, and on puns. right and and on blue sky it's not as many ads and all that jazz and it's just the, those well those yeah silly so, puns and whatnot are actually getting shared so it's so uh, to put a that's, to put that's a bow on come. this yes yeah and, and what you're saying is absolutely true it's great to see a lot of the magic community come over and if you're a magic player you know jump on there follow a bunch of your content creator friends and pretty soon you're going to start getting information like right out of the horse's mouth mm-hmm. kind of thing and um 
it's just uh, hopefully going to be a better place to get that information than a place like like X or whatever. So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's interesting to see, and uh, we'll see if it keeps growing. I guess, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's, uh, it's all it, it, it the yeah, it's in motion. So who knows? Yeah, yeah. if you Good. were thinking about it, maybe it's time. Anyway. <laughs> Cool. So but yeah, we, you um, know what I have what I have seen on on ooh. Blue Sky already is some deck lists. Uh, yes. Standards standards heating up. Let's just put it that way. We haven't had any big RCQs yet. We haven't had mm -hmm. you know well the RCQ season hasn't started officially, but it's right. It's this week. Like it's about to start. Uh, and pretty soon we're gonna have uh, you know big tournaments, which will be nice. I think Star City Games this weekend is running a big one, right? I think there was a ten or a couple ten Ks that just happened on Friday. We're recording this on Saturday, and I think today there's a few more. So hopefully by Monday we'll have a little bit more information. But again, so standards in this weird you know moment right now. We talked about foundations. Mm -hmm. Foundations just dropped. A lot of people yep. are experimenting with the new cards, but we haven't seen anything you know take shape yet because we haven't had any big tournaments. Money, baby, money. Until they put up a big 5k, oh, yeah. 10k, 50k, a big RCQ level money or RC level, you know, money. So, you know, get your RCQ win and you're in this, you know, big tournament for a lot of money. Mm -hmm. That's when we're going to see, you know, the real, hopefully good deck list come out. Worlds was right. a bit of an anomaly. Um, but, you know, that just had, it was a weird bunch of decks that came out of Worlds. And then <laughs> Foundations dropped, you know, shortly after. So, basically a lot of people, what I've seen on the ladder, uh, if we want to start with Standard and talk about yeah. kind of the metagame, and we can move on from there maybe to Limited or what have you, but Standard right now is interesting. I think uh, a lot of the deck lists that I'm seeing and that I'm seeing on the couple of MTGO challenges that happened this week are mostly the decks from pre-Foundations, and mm -hmm. people have literally just went, oh look, Llanowar Elves, this card's insane. I'm just going to put it in the Golgari shell. Easy. We're just going to cut a few cards. Here's a Llanowar Elf. Everything else the same. Glissa, still great. You know, Unholy Annex and Demons, mm -hmm. great. What, whatever else you want to play, great. Preacher of the Schism, yep. great. Um, but Land of Worlds just makes all those things better. You just get to yep. Liliana on two, or Preacher on two, or Unholy Annex on Glissa on two, whatever it is. Land of Worlds makes it better. Land of Worlds <laughs> ma makes it all better. The best card in this set. It's so so you're seeing Land of Worlds just pop into Golgari and some other lists, green lists. You're seeing, um, you know, Red basically playing the same core of creatures like Heartfire Hero, etc. But now Boros Charm, of course. And oh my uh, I stand by my statement. That, of that thing is exactly Dan as busted Charm. as you said it was going to be. Oh how many times goodness. have you lost it this week? How many, how many, so how many, many. times have you lost so to it? I've lost many. to it so many times already. And I'm just like, God, I, as soon as I'm at eight life, I'm like, Double Boros Charm, isn't it? They're going to Boros Charm me on end step, untap Boros mm -hmm. Charm. Yep, again. God, yeah. you know. Well, and, and the thing about yeah. this, every single mode on this is busted, you know? Because it's like, okay, yeah. maybe I can sur I can survive four damage. It'll be okay. Oh, wait, no, that Slick Shot Show Off has double strike. Well, dang it. You know, yeah. like it's <laughs> Or I yeah. sweep. Oh, they gave us Day of or Judgment. Sweep. Great. Here's a, you know, and then they, okay. Yeah. Indestructible. Like, yeah. Great. Okay. It, yeah, no, Boros Charm. It's, it's so funny, too, how this was part of a cycle where all the guilds got a charm. None of them yeah. are even close to the. I mean, like, is it charm and things? They, they have their uses. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm not trying to poop on all of them, but this is nuts. This sure. card is insane. Yeah, I mean, this card sees play in modern, or it used to, mm. anyway, before modern got rotated. But, you know, the, the red white burn decks in, in more powerful formats like modern played Boros Charm. I mean, Boros, Boros Burn is, is you know, was one of the, the better decks in modern at, at a certain points. And in standard, mm -hmm. I mean, if you played with this card in standard the first time around, it was, yeah, it was insane. So anyway, so we're seeing, you know, the red decks basically stay the same. Some of them are still mm -hmm. playing Gruul, but a lot of them have just shifted, playing a little bit of white, playing Boros Charm, still seeing all the other usual suspects, like um, the Screaming Nemesis is is picking up. Uh, I, I see that yeah, seen everywhere that. now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, any, anyway, so, but, but sticking to the Foundations card, so we've got Boros Charm, you know, Land of War Elves, another one, and now, now this is getting interesting. This is cutting edge, Ham, okay? I haven't even Ooh. actually seen this yet. I'm just hearing this is what's happening. Mm. The Azorius Reanimator deck, Azorius Oculus, one of the best mm -hmm. decks in, in Worlds, in Standard. Mm -hmm. it, I think it had one of the highest win rates uh, at Worlds. It just narrarily missed top eight. I think uh, Shota got like ninth on Breaker. Or there was like Ooh. two Japanese players that, that, that lost their win and in for top eight or something with Azorius. Anyway, it's one of the best decks. Azorius Oculus, very cheap, haughty gin. You know, they're milling a bunch, putting stuff into play with Helping Hand. Um, the new... Uh, is it not Thassa? Um, the new um, oh, what's her name? Kiora? The blue creature, Kiora. Thank you. Kiora is insane in that deck, apparently. And I'm hearing more and more people are playing. Ki and this is a card we didn't really call out. This card's nuts. No. And 
A lot of people are like, this card's very good in that deck. Not only are they filling the yard super quick, so it's, you're just immediately pooping out an 8-8 uh, for 3 mana alongside your 3-2, but also it just, you know, enables. It, it, it's a 3-2 body that trades with a bunch of other 3-drops and then, you know, it enables you to um, to to reanimate, etc. It does what the deck wants to do. So I'm seeing a lot of wow. people talk about Kiora in the blue-white deck. Um, okay. I'm also seeing um, people talking about your hometown hero your your fate you called it zombify i'm seeing oh. a lot of people experimenting oh. with zombify now and i'm like wow zombify for valgavoth zombify for it. you know obviously atraxa and uh, yeah um a lot of people are doing this alongside kiora and she fits perfectly with this kind of stuff mm. you know it's really weird that they printed zombify right after they printed uh because what was this? What was the one in? Was it? Is it Dusk, Duskmorn? I think the White Duskmorn, Rise, 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 Rise of the Moth, right, Right of the Moth, yeah, Right of the, the Moth was the other one, yeah. It's like the yeah. same card. It's just harder to cast. I mean, it's got flashback, but then they just immediately like printed like almost a better version of this. Like well, you don't and, need to flash back when you're bringing in Dalgavoth, right? And it's yeah. significantly better because Right of the Moth also <laughs> brings a finality counter onto it, whereas oh, that's right. doesn't. Yeah, yeah. And so if, <laughs> yeah, like you know, why? Yeah, because it, it's one of those things. Like, if I write of the Moth Valgavoth out on turn four, okay, good setup. Yeah. But if they have a Shieldred's Edict or a Liliana or something like that, well, okay, then now yeah. my Valgavoth's gone forever. But if that was a Zombify and I have another Zombify or a Cruelty yeah. Edict in my hand it's or funny. whatever, like, all right, we're fine. <laughs> they just obsoleted yeah. the card they just printed yeah. anyway. So I'm seeing people Wild. experiment with, with, with Zombify, which is cool. Um, but anyway, mm -hmm. getting back to what I was saying. So Zombify decks are a bit mm -hmm. of, there's some brews. There are brews happening, but then there's a lot of decks. Yet, but maybe. Yes, exactly. Yeah, there like, like, like I said, Llanowar Elves, just right into the Golgari decks. We've got um, yep. the, uh, the Kiora. God, I can't remember. Kiora, yes, I, I will remember yes, her Kiora, name. Yes, Kiora, the she, Rising Tide is the one. The Rising yep. Tide, yeah. She, she mm -hmm. goes into a bunch of different decks. She's seeing play uh, in a bunch of these Reanimator decks alongside Zombify. She's seeing play in the Oculus decks with Helping Hand and all that stuff. Um, another card that I, I think I really like that I, I want to experiment a little bit more with is uh, Spectral Sailor in the Demir mm. Tempo decks. Now you don't have to, like the map off Siren was pretty good, the Spy Caller Siren, but Spectral Sailor mm -hmm. just having Flash or even playing alongside and just having eight one drops, like it's so nice to just like flash in a Kaito off this guy after you, you know, you end step flash in Spectral Sailor, untap swing, Kaito, then Spectral Sailor comes down again on their end step and like just having Flash lets you make these nice plays. And basically your entire deck operates at instant speed, except, well, I guess Kaito at instant speed, but he's the only card you ever cast on your turn, really. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, th this deck's also great. I'm even seeing a Kiora in this deck, in Demir oh, Tempo wow. and stuff, which is wild. Just for filtering and just, like, they fill the yard fast, and I don't know. It's, it's mm. So I'm seeing Spectral Sailor, I'm seeing um, uh, Kiora, and then I think there was another blue card um that i can't recall now but demir has been been playing with a bunch of these kind of you know cheap tempo-y you know blue cards and picking up some really good sideboard cards things like you know maybe flash freeze or uh you know death mark and this kind of stuff uh hmm. they, they get to play yeah. you know a much better sideboard than they did so anyway so a bunch of these decks you know uh, cool. are just like the almost copies of their pre-foundations versions but then they're slotting in one card domain overlords or the overlords ramp deck Mm -hmm. They're just playing like one Maelstrom Pulse. That's it. The rest of the deck's the same. Overlords are still great. Just jamming a little bit oh better removal. Goodness. I think Ma Maelstrom Pulse is the only thing I've seen really <laughs> pop up. And this is another interesting card. You know, it lets them deal with permanence. lets them deal with the, you know, big wide boards like um, the Jeskai uh, Tokens decks uh, or Boros Tokens. They go, you know, still still really mm -hmm. wide. There, there are still some good, like Jeskai right. Tokens is a really good aggro deck. And I, I just, you know... Gruel aggro and mono red kind of got all the spotlight because ley line is so flashy and starting with this ley line and killing them super fit fast but the jeskai deck is super consistent super powerful and um yeah can can still win games out of nowhere so maelstrom pulse is a really good pickup i think for for some yeah. of the, the bigger decks but um it, i'm trying to think if so there was funny. anything else mm -hmm. we have so many amazing uh so many amazing removal spells in in the game right now that yeah, Maelstrom Pulse, it, it, it feels like it should be a, a slam dunk, but honestly, I play a lot of Golgari, and I'm in these colors all the time. I forgot this was in there. You know, like, I, this isn't, yeah. I, I should, you know, anyway, but... It's, it's pretty good. Great card. It's useful. I mean, some so of the good. decks were playing, like, like the, the Orzhov decks were playing, you know, Legions to Ashes. I think I even saw a couple, yep. like, five-color decks. This is just a much better, you know, card, it is. I think. But anyway, I don't know. Um, but Maelstrom yeah. Pulse was an interesting one, and um, yeah, Legion Stash is, yeah, is another one Le that, that some people Stash are playing. Yeah, Legion Stash is interesting, I mean, but 
Yeah, it, the fact that it exiles is notable, but that's about it. I, I know I've put mm-hmm. it in some sideboards, and I've been underwhelmed by it every time. Yeah, the, the, well, the go by token deck isn't as common as you might think these days. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. That's and yeah, it's, it's still good. I just don't see it very much. It's weird, mm-hmm. but um, I was gonna say though, let let's move yeah. on to um your favorite kind of like, standard meta decks are they're boring. Okay, they're they're yeah, there's yeah, some I new mean, cards, but basically it's the sure, old shells. Sure. What what kind of jank? What kind of jank are you brewing mm. up, Ham? What have you been so, jamming this week? I've got two brews I want to talk about, so ooh, you go excellent. first. Excellent. So I've, I've got a couple. So obviously I've been working on Zombify, because of course I have. Right. Um, And I did mm-hmm. already have like a Mardu reanimation shell that I thought, oh, I could slot Zombify into this, and I realized it doesn't actually fit super well. Um, mm-hmm. But then I also realized the moment that I no longer need Right of the Moth, the need to have white all of a sudden disappears almost completely. And so I've got right. a Golgari build with Zombify right now that is... Okay. Like it took me a while to kind of dial it in and get to a point where I'm pretty happy with it, but it feels really good. It's and the funnel, funnily enough, um, Zombify isn't even necessarily the core of that deck, but it's an important element of it. And it's funny you mm. mentioned the Llanowar Elves as well because it's running Llanowar Elves and Zombify because in a yeah. perfect world, Llanowar Elves on one into you know a Liliana or a uh, an Overlord of the Bailmerk on two. If it puts yeah. an Atraxor of Algavoth in the yard, that's a turn three Zombify, you know, and what's your mm-hmm. opponent going to do? If you're on the play, I mean, literally, they just finished their turn two and they're staring down Valgavoth. Are you yep. main decking Shieldred's Edict? I, <laughs> if so, I'll have to sacrifice my land where else. Oh, no. Like, it's it's oh, yeah. it's nuts. Um, so when when the nut draw in that deck is like damn near unbeatable, which is where you really want your reanimator decks to be, right? So so, um, so let's clarify. I, I want to clarify here because yeah, you know, yeah. I play a lot of scrumming emergence. The nut draw is turn three Atraxa on, on the player on the draw. You turn sure. three Atraxa in that deck. <clears throat> What's the nut draw here? Is it turn three Atraxa, turn three Valgavoth? Can turn you three it? Atraxa or Valgavoth, yeah. yeah. And then ideally, nice. I mean, I've, I've, I've had it where I've been able to pull off like the turn three Atraxa who then reloads my hand for a turn four Valgavoth because I have to discard right, the Valgavoth yeah. to hand size generally and I just drew like three different another... animation spells. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I found with that, using um, Liliana the Veil is like the core the like the, the glue that holds that whole thing together which no surprise there really um and when yeah, she yeah. can drop on turn two to either chuck something into the bin while you know putting pressure on your opponent's hand or removing the only creature they have you're having a good day yeah um you know because well, it's just there's so, some, so early yeah yeah and there's some there's some other excellent pieces right now in standard for for mm-hmm. decks that want to discard like bitter triumph is oh oh it's MVP, amazing chef's kiss yep. i love that i love bitter drive the, it's the it, moment it just feels like yeah. a juiced up go for the throat that like so is good. also enabling your strategy you well, go ahead what and, and, and bitter triumph is one where actually in the most recent build i'm running four like i had been i yeah, had two oh, yeah. and it was fine and then i found every ta- no. every time i i drew it like oh this is just so much better and so i just yeah. put in four of them because it's just like yeah. i i never don't want this there's always a hit you know creatureless decks just aren't a thing right now um so, so you'll are you you'll be able what, to hit. what colors are you Jund? You're a Jund reanimate deck or? Golgari. Go, just Golgari. Okay. Black Straight Golgari. Interesting. And so huh. I'm using Overlord of the Bale Merc, um as my primary way to fill the yard. As far as discard goes, mm-hmm. I've got four Bitter Triumph and four Liliana. Liliana. That's it. Yeah. So as far as discarding hmm. stuff out of my hand, that's not happening as often, but I'm using Seed of Hope, Overlord of the Bale Merc, um, you know, ways to mill Seed of in Hope. addition. Oh, okay. Yeah. In, in addition to some of those other things, Seed of Hope actually is one. Oh, okay, Overlord of the Bailmerk, just real quick. This card's insane. Um, Mill Dorks mm-hmm. are something that I have a lot of feelings on, and this I think is the best one that they've ever printed. Like, well, mm, really? maybe second to Stitcher Supplier, but that's where we're talking. Like, that's how good we're yeah. talking. Um, the fact that it can bring back Liliana, which is a key piece mm-hmm. of removal, is amazing. And the other element um, that I'm running and I'm pretty happy with is Valgavoth's Faithful. I have that in there as well. Oh. Because I this could, that. yeah, yeah, because mm. it's it's a one mana one one, but you can pay four, you know, three and a black, sacrifice it and reanimate something. Well, so right. it is a five mana reanimation spell if you think of it that way. That yeah, dodges right. negate or like soft counters because when you put it on the stack, mm-hmm. if they have like a no more lies, you can just pay for it. Which, granted, that does still slow down the reanimation effect, but it's still just sitting on the field and they have to find another answer to it, or you're just going to reanimate right. next turn. So, you know, and it, this getting pulled back off of Bailmerk is, is shockingly useful. Like, it lines up yeah. really well most of the it's time. It's like Bailmerk. It's almost like Bailmerk can find your reanimation spell in the same way the Squirming deck will use Picklock Prankster or Philogy exactly. Archaeologist to 
mill and get that non-creature. Like, those cards don't put the reanimation creature in your hand, but they'll get the reanimation spell. I always was, like, a little cool on Overlord of the Bale Merc in those, in those squirming decks because in the squirm deck, I sure. didn't find the squirming. But yeah, in your deck, and if you're using this, that makes a lot of mm -hmm. sense. Yeah, now he's finding yeah, the reanimation yeah. spell. So, so I'm, I'm curious, though. Let me stop yeah. you for a second. You said Seed Please. of Hope. Why, why Seed of Hope over... <laughs> cash grab or say its name like don't those dig deeper and like they do they dig deeper and are generally better however seed of hope gains you life so against the aggro decks that's relevant so for, as far as main deck okay. is concerned also it only costing one mana so you'll notice that this has a lot of one drops in it and the reason that i'm doing mm. that is so that i can take advantage of the lanowar elf mana that is otherwise going to be floating so if on oh, turn okay. two so if i lanowar elf on one and then turn two use an overlord of the bail merc if i have a seed of hope in my hand i can use the lanowar elf mana to see the hope spell. as well and so yeah, it just interesting it, hmm. i just end up able to cast more spells earlier you know it's kind of right. the thought and see the hope grabbing any permanent it makes sure that the lands are going to be coming uh your way in most cases or at the very least you move closer so you draw another you know land when you need it um mm -hmm. and i do also have two uh cruelty of gix in there as well uh because oh, okay. it's just it wow. just rules and does a lot of it does all the things so, you need and a it's a permanent that see <laughs> hope can grab i'm all over the place yeah so, so how many well how many reanimation spells are you playing you're playing zombify and the one drop creature and cruelty of gix Yes, so how I many am. total? Like 10? It's, I want to say, yeah, like 10 or 11. Yeah. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> okay. It is a lot. Interesting. It is a hmm. lot. Well, but you, but you, you found it's good. It all works together. I, it's nicely. been working so far, and I, I'm, I'm hmm. still tuning it. I'm still trying to find the right mix. But uh, in general, yeah. it's working better than I expected, and it feels like an actual cool. reanimator deck instead of a mid range deck that can reanimate. If that makes sense, right? Because um, you yeah. can build a lot of great Golgari mid range decks that have a reanimation spell or two in them, and that's fine. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not trying to throw shade or anything. But this is like an all in right. reanimation deck because we have. Yeah. Four, you know, four Atraxa and four Valgavoth so that the mills are far more likely to oh, hit wow. them. Um, yeah, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm all in on that strategy. And so far it's been, mm -hmm. it's playing the way that I was hoping it would. Whether or not it's great, well, I don't know. As I put, get more time in on the ladder, I'll be able to, you know, get more data and mm -hmm. prove one way or the other on that. But I know as a reanimation enthusiast who's absolutely just enamored with that archetype, it, it, it's my, my brain's firing the happy chemicals as I'm going with this thing. Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, well, I'm, you know, same yeah. here. I, I love, I love yeah. doing broken stuff in, in <laughs> for any format and, and mm -hmm. standard when you can put turn three attracts a, like that feels like you're playing, you know, pioneer or modern compared to your opponent like, who's playing standard. And I love it. Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. yeah. So I, and so I, I hear you. However, mm -hmm. I, find that the reanimator decks are never tier one and and the mm -hmm. only reason why is it depends on how many sideboard graveyard hate cards other decks are playing so Correct. the next question of course is in your experience are you able to fight through the hate or is it like oh if they're bringing in three rest in peace and this and that i'm done or rest what, in peace you... is the one i'm scared of Honestly, though, yeah. Ghost Vacuum, Leyland of the Void, um, Soul Guide Lantern. Soul Guide Lantern is a little tricky, uh, but it's not impossible. And that's part of the reason why I'm running so many copies of all the different you know spells and threats uh, is to right. fight through some of that. Um, hmm. Yeah, and actually, that's one of the reasons why I also have Cruelty of Gix in there. Like, I actually had a match where I won a very grindy game. The match only went two, two – it was two games. I won them both. But the second game lasted, I believe, 20 to 25 minutes. And it ultimately won with a Cruelty of Gix stealing their Archfiend of the Draws. So, like, that's what I needed to do. they had exiled your graveyard. They had exiled my graveyard, like, three separate yeah. times. Um, and But the thing yeah. is, they needed to. If any one of those exiles yeah. hadn't come through, I would have been fine. And being able to right. loop the Liliana the way it does, I was able to keep, keep their board picked apart. One hmm. thing that's really clutch for the sideboard, pick your poison. This card is absolutely as good as you've been saying it is. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I slotted it in and was amazed every time because it deals with Ghost Vacuum. Yeah. It deals with Rest in Peace. Granted, the initial hit still happens, but um, yeah. you know whatever the whatever the hate du jour that they're putting out, this deals with it. Additionally, it's removal that can deal with Deep Cavern Bat, which is another challenge yep. that you know we definitely need or to deal with. Yeah, an opposing Atraxa or Valgavoth, which is of nice, an opposing Atraxa Valgavoth, one uh, mana the to annex. Eat. Like, yeah, right, if, right. if you're in so, green right now, just you, it, this is almost main deckable in the current meta, but like definitely <laughs> keep it in your sideboard. Yeah. Like it's nuts. I, I, yeah. I like it. I think mm -hmm. in my estimation, I mean, well, in my decks, if I'm playing green, I think mm -hmm. my favorite sideboard card right now is Tranquil Frillback. 
And it yep. does almost the same thing as Pick Your Poison, except it's better against aggro because it gains you life. And just mm -hmm. like when you slam this and, you know, blow up a ley line or blow up a, you know, forge out of the sideboard and gain life, it's insane. But also it's so good against domain, blowing up overlords, blowing up ley lines. It's so yep. good against other graveyard decks. Being at graveyard hate is not something Pick Your Poison and those other cards do. Haywire might. And, you know, there's a bunch of stuff that right. you can hit enchantments and flyers or whatever, but... Like, Frillback feels like it does, it, it, it just covers so many bases. I side it in almost every single match, because um, mm -hmm. it just it's just good against almost everything. So, I, I'm just saying, other Pick Your Poison also good, <laughs> but if you are in green, there's other, like, this is another great 100%. option. I love the Frillback. I think it's so good, right? I've been saying this, it seems like for weeks now, I just think it's been <laughs> one of the best sideboard cards. But yeah, so we're seeing a lot of graveyard hate now, because, of course, uh, Zorius Oculus was already a deck, and people were packing ghost vacuums and stuff because of that deck. Mm -hmm. Um, but now with Zombify suddenly back in standard, I'm seeing a lot of people brewing and, and, you know, cooking and, uh, um, oh, yeah. so Frillback's, you know, value just goes up and up and yeah. up and same and, with pick your poison, same with, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've gone up against a couple of people running for Frillback main and I'm not going to tell them they're wrong. You know, it, it, yeah, it, it, it does line up. See. It just lines yeah. up. I mean, and the floor on it is just a three, three for three. You know, I know nowadays yeah. that's not great, but that can still do work for you, you know? But so I it's, can't, I'm telling yeah. you, I can't name a single deck where it's ever a 3-3 three, three for 3 against. You know, there's no, no other deck in the metagame mm -hmm. that I think I've, I've, there's always something to kick this and hit hit their thing, you know? Always. Even if it's just gaining life against aggro, that's like trading yeah. for a monstrous it's, rage or like whatever. Mm -hmm. It's it's awesome. It's insane. Yeah. So, no, yeah, it's, I, it's I really like that one. And it's mm -hmm. so funny because right now, like, I'm more afraid as a graveyard enthusiast, I'm more afraid of the Tranquil Frillback than I am, you know, Rest in Peace or yeah. Leyline. Like, I see those and yeah. I can deal with them. This just hits the stack <laughs> and I'm screwed. <laughs> like, it's so, kind you of know amazing. what I've been doing? Well, see, you're not playing blue. So I've been experimenting. Correct. Actually, somebody in my channel, uh, you know, posted a Grixis or no, sorry, a Z uh, Demir list with Zombify using Overlord of the Flood Pits to draw and discard. Mm. That's another really good one you can jam on yep. turn three and, you know, gives you that, that discard outlet alongside the one in like cards you mentioned Liliana the mm -hmm. Veil vale and uh Overlord of um uh the Bale Merc Bale Merc and yeah let me see here oh and Kiora Kiora is the other blue card they're using yeah. to uh to, to put those cards in the yard one one card this is a weird one I don't know how good this is but it is actually kind of interesting to consider in a, in a reanimator shell is Curator of Destinies Curator of Destinies does it's the six drop Sphinx from Foundations that huh. ETBs and Factor Fictions basically can't be countered, comes down as a big flyer, and then the cards that you don't take go to the graveyard. So it actually fills your graveyard as well as draws you a bunch of cards. And it, I'm telling you, I, like Factor Fiction's amazing, right? The design sure. of of they they've put like stapled Factor Fiction to so many cards. Sphinx of Athune back in the day and whatever core set that was. Curator right. of Destinies, just the latest one. Uh the dude from Theros, whose name I can't remember, black, uh, black Atris, blue guy. The of half a Atris, yeah. Atris, yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. You know, because yeah. it's so fun to do this shell game of like, which cards do I put down? Which cards do I, do mm -hmm. I put face up? And when you're playing a reanimator deck, there's no correct answer. It's all bad for you. If you're the opponent, yep. you're like, okay, I know they, I don't want to give them this thing. But I know that if I put in the graveyard, they might just have Zombify and then it's going to come back into play. Like, how am I going to yep. separate these piles? It's a nightmare for the opponent. Mm -hmm. I think it's hilarious. I, I don't know if it's that great, but it's kind of interesting. I don't know. It's another card to think about in um, these decks from, from Foundations. So Absolutely. a lot of people doing, doing graveyard shenanigans right now in Standard. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move off of the graveyard decks for hmm. a minute. I, I, I tried two good. decks. I really want to yeah. make... Um, vengeful blood witch that's what he's called uh two drop one one zulaport cutthroat ability yeah. basically uh, every time a creature dies uh you sorry every time a creature you control uh dies your opponent loses a life you gain a life so you drain them for one and i love sack decks I, you know reanimation's fun another archetype i love is like oni cult anvil i i loved even though it was you know oh sadly towards its it, the twilight of its uh, you know existence in standard it didn't see much play it was a super fun deck. I, back in the day, Rally the Ancestors with, with Zulaport, Cutthroat, C Collected Company, and th those decks were nuts. Abzan Let's Company go. decks. Yep. But um, Blood Witch, I'm like, okay. You know, I wrote an article about this. It was in my top 10. I thought it's, you know, this... I, I, in the article, I basically said, as soon as they print a really good sack outlet, like, let's go. Well, a couple of people, uh, one person in my channel decided to start brewing, gave me a list, and I started getting ideas, and then another person. So, so I saw like an Orzov <laughs> list using uh, Bartolome del yep. Presidio, is that his name? 
free sack outlet to uh, to obviously sack a bunch of stuff. You've got the yeah, Bartolome is the main sack outlet, but you've also mm-hmm. got um, Eaten Alive. Uh, the the it's one black mana, you know, exile creature or planeswalker, I believe, and you sack a creature to cast it for one. Otherwise, you pay five. Um, that card as well, and then alongside a bunch of fodder, uh, Bartolome with Forsaken Miner and the Vengeful Blood Witch in play is just like. Sack ping, sack ping, sack ping. Because every time you sack the miner, the vengeful blood which pings, triggering crime. So it, for every black mana you have, you just plus, you, you grow the um, the Bartolome instant speed and just drain them. Bang, 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 bang. Like I've done it like X wow. is six out of nowhere to gain six life against aggro and not die. And just Bartolome is now an eight, nine or eight, seven or whatever. And he just kills them on the backswing like end step just make bartolome a 10 10 gain 10 or like make like really just huge amounts of life nasty forsaken miner the new card from foundations and there's no way i'm gonna remember the name of this guy he's a one black mana one one that dies into a one one flying insect token he's an elf i think yes um i i can't remember his name i'm really bad with names all right i'm an old man uh and i've I've even drafted that dude uh Infestation Sage. Infestation, yeah, there it yeah, is. yeah. Infestation yeah. Sage. I, He's another great fodder I, piece. I, mm-hmm. I survived a draft game because I was able to sacrifice this and do a, and have an aerial jump blocker. He's really good. Oh, damn. Yes, anyway. He's great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. so he, he's been interesting in the deck. So you're playing a bunch of one drops like this. You're playing him. You're playing, oh, I don't even remember. I, I, I played a few matches with the deck and it was, it was pretty fun. So nice. th- there's this sack thing going on that like, I don't think it's quite there yet. But mm-hmm. it's like Vengeful Blood, which is very impressive. Yep. When you have it in play with the right cards, it's just like bang, 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 bang. Like just trigger, 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 trigger. They're dead. Like they, they keep swinging and you keep mm-hmm. taking damage and then you just keep erasing the damage by, you know, blo- chump blocking and you're sacking stuff. And you're just like, it, it feels like impossible for like the aggro decks to kill you a lot of times. Anyway, it's interesting. Yeah. Well, and that engine that you're talking about, I mean, we're talking about two key pieces. You need the sack outlet mm-hmm. and you need the Blood Witch itself down. But once you have that, right. whatever other material you can just throw into the machine, you're good. Yeah. yeah. And there's a bunch. There's amazing, a bunch of good cheap actually. fodder. So mm-hmm. anyway, there's that version. There's also a, yeah. a, a Rakdos version that another uh, person in my channel submitted. And it was also very interesting. Um, same kind of thing, you know, using a uh, sack, you know, creature, creatures that sack for value and everything else to uh, yeah. to pump the Blood Witch. So there, there's a few different um, decks is what I'm kind of trying to say here that, that are built around Blood Witch, but none of them feel great yet. But I, I would love to see. I, I think it's very, very, very close to, to being um, a very powerful archetype the sack the aristocrats is 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 the name for those uh yep. in the channel who don't know this is the name of this kind of deck when you're sacking a bunch of your small creatures they're all small humans like these vampires they're all literal like aristocrats almost but yeah you're sacking a bunch yeah. of them and um and, and draining your opponent without even attacking them you just cartel aristocrat yeah. was the original yeah yeah, yeah that's right named after the yeah, there was a whole series of aristocrats back in Ra- yeah. was it a return to ravnica or was it um yeah. Anyway, there's a, a number return. of different. It was, yeah, return. To it was return to Ravnica. Yeah. yeah. There were a couple of different character. You know, a couple of different creatures that were titled aristocrat, and they all revolved around this kind yeah. of theme. So the name stuck. small humans, small yeah. vampire. They're all one ones and two twos, but that's what's so good about them. You bring mm-hmm. them all back. Oh, oh. I'm sorry. I almost forgot. The one of the most important cards in the deck Ooh. is a card. Another card that I'm seeing uh, in a bunch of different different places. Actually, I'll talk about the next deck uh, using kind of the same card. Don't know the name. It's four mana. It's white, white, and two colorless for a sorcery that brings back all the creatures that cost two or less. Uh, yes. It starts with an R, I think. <laughs> Am yep. I wrong? It is it starts Raise with an R. the Past. Raise the Past. That's Raise it. the Past yep. is nuts. This card is, so is good. ridiculous. Oh, yeah. dude. So uh, in the next <laughs> deck, I, I, I put yep. like, I don't know, over 100 power on the battlefield <sighs> with this, this other deck. But but in, in the, the Orzov, the Orzov Aristocrats deck, it's bananas. It brings back Bartolome and all the sack fodder and all the uh, vengeful blood witches in your yard. If you put all that into play in one turn, that's it. It's game over. Like as long as you yeah, have one but Bartolome, you just sack and you have two or three, you know, vengeful blood witches. That's like thirty damage. It's crazy. It's Raise the past has been insane, and that's a good segue mm-hmm. into the next deck. This is a an absolute meme, uh, <laughs> but hair. I love it. Ha- getting hairy. Ah, uh, yes. Hair apparent. I was getting hairy a little bit this week. Hair apparent is a two mana, two two creature from Foundations. One white, one colorless, rabbit noble. When it ETBs, 
Create a number of 1-1 one, one white rabbit creature tokens equal to the number of other creatures you control named Hair Apparent. And that last line, a deck can have any number of cards named Hair Apparent. <laughs> so I played with a, a white green Hair Apparent deck with 12 Hair Apparents, and it had a bunch of the uh, one green, one white XX rabbit that's uh, power and toughness is equal to the number of uh, other creatures you, or creatures you control, yes. including itself, with Trample. Um, and it had, you know, a bunch of other small stuff. Uh, the, uh, the rabbit Lord, the, the, the rabbit Lord that pumps all your other rabbits, squirrels, and whatever other animal types. And it also, when rabbits ETB, they use scry one, um, right. <laughs> ham, the valley you, quest so, caller, I think it is. Va valley, yes. valley, no, not valley flood caller. That's the blue quest one. Caller. Quest caller. Yeah. 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 So you're yeah. playing a bunch of, all of them are two drops. So again, all of them come back off the raise the past or whatever it's called, that white sorcery. So you bring back a bunch of hair of parents and they all see each other and trigger. And you made like, I made 28, you know, creatures in one shot. And two of them were 28, 28 trample green, white rabbits. And like, you're doing nonsense, really silly nonsense. <laughs> 18 lands in the deck, like 20 lands, like a couple, depending on if you want to play Land of War Elves or not, one version was playing like 18 lands in Land of War Elves. Um, you're, you could even play Bushwhack. So these are really land light decks. Like the Aristocrats deck, you're playing like 20 lands, 22 lands. Uh, this Hera Parent deck was playing like 18, 20 lands. And it's just all two drops. And then, you know, you have a couple threes. They, the, the version I was playing was actually um, a Bant deck. Mm. Um... And let me see. The the blue was for another Foundations card, Inspiration from Beyond. So the Inspiration is is a blue sorcery, mm. which at first you might say, what, what, what? Why is this in this like weird, you know, hair apparent <laughs> deck? Uh. Well, it mills and then it finds your raise the past. So you can mill a bunch of these rabbits, these hair apparents, and then raise the past you you find the raise the past off the inspiration mm -hmm. from beyond you slam raise the past and put all these rabbits into play and just create this <laughs> massive board out of nowhere and kill them so it was it was very meme you know but it did come together a couple of games and it was that was it like the opponent had there's no way they could answer me putting like right. even just three hair parents into play was like too much like all the triggers off each other was nasty that's so, amazing it's safe to say there's some goofy nonsense going on out there, kids, all right? Don't try this at home, but if you want, by all means, please try this. It's it's hilarious. Some of these decks are silly, and now's the time because we don't have the kind of metagame coalesced yet into, right. okay, this is the best. So right now, you're seeing a lot of aggro. I'm seeing a lot of aggro on the ladder. I'm seeing a lot of aggro in the MTGO challenges, that the few that we have had since Foundations dropped. Um and I'm yeah. seeing a lot of the same the same deck lists from from pre foundations, and they're just putting in one or two cards. So these aristocrat decks, these hair apparent decks, even the zombify decks, I haven't seen like a good tight list yet. Like mm -hmm. they're all over the place. You're playing you're playing Golgari. Oh, I, I know other people playing yeah. Demir, and now some people are playing mm -hmm. Grixis zombify, and there's you know Jund and. Nobody's yeah, settled think, on like. You know. Yeah, nobody has figured out exactly. And even to be fair, like the the list that I'm playing, Zombify is kind of icing. It doesn't. It's not necessarily what's tying yeah. the deck together the way that I had first yeah, envisioned. Yeah. You know. Um. But yeah, we'll figure it out. Right. But the other great thing about this, yeah, yeah. with Foundations being around for so long, like. Whether or not it's a good thing that it's here for five years, the reality is these cards that we're talking about can kind of hold together archetypes in meaningful yeah. ways. And the the supporting cast for all of these is going to shift. And who knows? Like maybe right. Zombify is not hot right now, but maybe Stitcher Supplier is in an upcoming set. And then all of a sudden, like the whole thing opens up, you know, we don't exactly. know. We'll see. And that's an exciting possibility, yeah. you know. Well, and that's exactly what I was saying yeah. with with uh, the witch, uh, the blood witch, or whatever, blood witch, vengeful yes. blood witch. That card is like one good card away from being broken. Like if they put insane, I don't know, one yeah. more sweet sack outlet into standard that's one or mm -hmm. two mana, or you know, some piece of fodder that's really good. Suddenly, that's like out of like it's just right on the cusp of being good enough. And you're, you're what you're yeah. saying is true. A bunch of decks like this, right? Oh yeah, the moment we have a sack outlet that can produce mana, if they give us one of the like, the altars oh. or something, that thing's gonna be just. Yeah. But I don't know that they'll ever give this that in standard again. But yeah. No. But uh, yeah, I don't know. One so 
before we stray too far away from hair apparent, there is one deck that I want to mm. try with that. Uh, I've seen mm -hmm. a couple of people doing hair apparent, and it plays better than I expected. If I'm completely honest, um, yeah, you know, yeah, like it seems I, like I a meme, against, but it it seems yeah, like a meme. But it, like right. I went up against one mono white player who actually just I think the deck might have just been like planes hair apparent and knight errant of Aos, and I'll be damned if it didn't work. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, like it was yeah, kinda, probably. It just I'm gonna just reload yeah. my hand with hair apparents and just keep them coming. And it's one of those They're where it's like cheap enough. Yeah. If I had the if I had a sweeper, then everything they're doing ceased in that particular game. I didn't, so good game. Yeah, you know? that's, that's was, the only issue. Yeah. Exactly. It's Temporary very narrow. Lockdown it's very linear. Is, is yep. great. Yeah, yep. and Sunfall is still insane. And in these decks, yeah. I, I, the funny thing is, you know, they put Day of Judgment into Foundations, and we were joking when we were talking about Boros Charm, mm -hmm. how ineffectual, you know, Day of Judgment right. can be in a lot of games, especially against the deck you really wanted against the aggro decks or whatever, and they they just Boros Charm it or whatever. Boris yeah. Charm, their board effectively negating it, but um, but also you know like but but Sunfall you know is the real killer. The exile, the yeah. exile from Sunfall, all the Hurts. raise the pasts, all the yeah the zombifies. Like if they they exile a bunch of your stuff, then it's like oh that's. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. I think the moment Sunfall rotates, a lot of kind of creature-based strategies will become a little a little smoother, yeah. and some of these recursion uh, outlets will be yeah. meaningful. But you know, one some... thing that oh yeah oh one thing that I definitely want to do with hair apparent specifically though is unfortunately mm -hmm. not standard legal, but I'm keeping my eyes out to see maybe a reprint someday. Um, I think I'm going to try this in Explorer or Pioneer as it's going to be known soon coming to Arena. Um, Hopefully, Mystic Reflection with hair apparent. Oh. If you're not familiar with Mystic Reflection, it's an instant for two or you can foretell it for oh, one. Yeah. Choose target non-legendary creature. The next time one or more creatures or planeswalkers enter the battlefield this turn, they enter as copies of the chosen creature. So you have a hair apparent that's coming down that would make, you know, eight rabbits or whatever. Target the, or make five rabbits or whatever. Target itself. And then it makes five copies of hair apparent all enter and see each other and and trigger. Huh. So that's interesting. It, it's Jeez, that's going deep. Let, let's crank that meme up to 11. And <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, anyway, how many memes can we squeeze into one? How many deck? memes can we get um, into here? Yeah. And I want to get impact trevors uh, in there like so it. that I can actually, I don't know, eventually win a game with this thing. So I want, let's, you know, we're working three colors. Let's get weird. Anyway, I don't know. So that's something yeah. that I'm going to be tinkering with because, you well, know, that's some you jank know, that I'm here you for. Know the, I guess the last thing I want to say about these, like a lot of the brews I'm seeing mm -hmm. uh, are beautiful, like because they're it, it, it's showing that Foundations is doing what it's set out to do, what Wizards set out to do by creating a set like this. All of these cards are not $80 rares like Meat Hook Masker or Shouldred or, you know, some mm -hmm. Chase Planeswalker that's dominating standard Gideon in the past and other, you know, where they're like 50, 60 bucks. What is the best card in the set? Oh, it's a common that costs one called Llanowar Elves. So it's been reprinted infinite times. So <laughs> you can build these or, or, mm -hmm. you know, Zombify is a common Boros Charm Charms. All yep. the cards we're talking about here, none of them are worth that much. They're all really cheap and just effective, powerful tools. You know, the, the Vengeful Blood, which is an uncommon and the, the hair apparent. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? They're like 10 cents each or whatever. Actually, I don't know that kind of what? card when any, any card that says, yeah, any number of cards named this can be in your deck for whatever, like, People just collect them all, right? They want to get like infinite mm -hmm. of them, and the Nazgul from Lord of the Rings it's, being like a whatever uncommon twenty dollar, ten dollar uncommon. Yeah, it, it was the money pull from the set. Like, yeah, yeah. It, uh, so yeah anyway, weird. um, or one of the money. It was like a top five value card in that set. Like behind Bowmasters in the ring, it was like Nazgul. Like, that was wild. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, hair and hair parent. I think yeah. right now is selling for you know. I, I think its value is around like three dollars. So, it's, you know, and it's a for common. common. Yeah. It's, it's okay, for never common mind. in the current set. Well, and to be fair, but, too. Well, yeah. and I recently just went out and purchased a Bolt Wave, like, which is an uncommon oh, yeah, yeah. from this set. Um, That's another one, yeah. And, yeah, and it cost me $4 from my local game yeah. store. And I was willing to pay for it for an uncommon because it's just. It's just so solid. And it was funny too, the yep. person selling selling it to me it was like, really? It's that's four dollars? And then you read it, it's like, oh yeah, that's busted. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I love it. Yep. Just no no special guest that's crazy or you know, no no but thing yeah, that so we have anyway. to chase, like some chase but, mythic. It's just foundations, yeah. it's cheap. Here are the best commons and uncommons. This is the foundation for building your decks. It's and and the very, foundation yes. should never be expensive. The one thing I wish they did do is is maybe print multiple cycles of rare lands like the lands are still the one sticking point financially mm -hmm. for a lot of players that really can make a deck cost a lot of money like I, people don't realize this but like 
you know, when a fast land or, or some really good dual land is just seeing a ton of play, it ends up being like like 13, 15 bucks sometimes, especially at its mm -hmm. height. And it's just like like the tri lands, you know, before they rotated the streets of New Capano oh once. Like some, some yep. of the stuff was like really expensive just for the lands. And it, it's always a feel bad when, you know, half the cost of the deck is like just because it's a three color deck and like there's like 30 mm -hmm. rare lands or 20, 20, whatever rare lands. Right. And it's like, yeah, that's. Uh, I wish the lands were, were cheaper. I don't know. Printing them at Uncommon probably isn't the right answer. They want to, you know, build value yeah, in. Yeah. It would have been nice to see multiple cycles. Anyway. It, agreed. Well, and, and Foundations itself is kind of interesting, though, because that those mana bases that they establish here are going to stay. You know, so like yeah. what rare land cycle could they give us that they, they're they not going to regret handing us? I would have loved. Happy. Like, I would have loved to see all 10 shock lands in there. And just like, well, yeah. these are just, oh, yeah. these are just standard moving forward. Let's go. Like, or, I think that would have been tri dope, but, or yeah, the tri -lands. The tri -lands would have been like, great. Even if they gave the us the non types tri -ands. like yeah, yeah, but the, yeah. the temples were. The temples are weak. Yeah. The temples are not amazing. And it's like, come no, on. Th this is, you yeah. know, that was a little bit of a miss anyway. But, yeah. um. You know, we're speaking of foundations and we're talking mm -hmm. about constructed here, but I, I, I have been playing a bunch of limited as well. Uh, and have I, don't, I know you're not a big limited, you know, magic player for well, the most part, but I know you dabble. You dabble. I dabble. So have you been? I, yeah. I dabble and I've been loving it. Foundations oh, yeah. feels. So there have been a lot of various limited environments over the, you know, over the years, like especially recently that have felt yeah. kind of weird, you know, like. You know, if you think back to like Strixhaven, yeah. it's like, yeah, this 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 deck has six OTJ? creatures. In it. Yeah, I'll be fine. You know, yeah, OTJ o is one of those where it's like how many free pack it's, is it's like four of, rares. Oh my right, god. Yeah, it's it's not a question of oh, how many creatures do I have or how many lands do I have, how many red sources, how many mythics do I have? Like that shouldn't yeah. be a question that you're asking in your limited environment, yeah. but it totally is. But in my experience with the foundations. I feel like I'm just playing magic. Like I've been like at my yeah. pre-release, I slammed a friggin' Sarah angel. It felt great. Like, you know, yeah. there's something about just the, the blocking, the tackling matters. You're playing with good value comes and uncommons. I don't know. It feels like what a draft set ought to feel like to me, you know, like the yeah. limited environment has just felt really good. Don't get me wrong. There are the busted bombs, you know, like there was one draft sure. where I care where I went uh, seven and one off the back of nice. Coma world eater. Oh, I picked God, up coma yeah. and well, what can you do? <laughs> I've like, lost to that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've and green is coma. really strong. It has a, has a lot of good creatures. Actually, the eager truffle sure. snout was the was the star of the show there. Oh yeah. Um, Uncommon. And yeah. so four two. Yeah, just it's it's a it's a little trampling three drop in green. It was exactly oh, yeah. what I needed. You know, makes food. Yeah. You yeah. know, and it's a pig, so of course I was gonna play it. You know, um, pork, yeah, four two yeah. trampler and it makes food when it, when it hits exactly. So yeah, makes a pork chop. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, but you know, so, I, so you know, you're exactly right. Exactly. I've right. done a couple yeah. and it feels really good. So I would love to hear. Yeah, please espouse. Yeah. The, uh, well, the, your foundation's experience. I, yeah. I, I was comparing it to summer vacation. It's almost like during the school year, like, so to speak, we're, we're like studying these sets. These sets are convoluted and they're okay. Karloff Manor and we've got morphs and there's the shell game of face down creatures and they have war two and lost caverns of Ixalan with the crafting. Some of those ridiculous craft cards, you had to read them like three times times before you're like what is this sunbird standard even what what does this <laughs> yep. do this is ridiculous i could take it out flip it over and then i flip it back and i read it maybe i'm an and idiot i don't know i've heard this other player say the same thing you know there's a lot of convoluted yeah. cards craft with one or more five like what the hell does that even mean that? on the front yeah. side <laughs> it's, it's so funny that you so, point out sunburst standard because i know i've made a point of reading this I like three times and i still card. can't that confidently was, tell you what it does it's, yeah. <laughs> it's one of the most egregious ones that was a bad one but my point is a lot of these sets convoluted oh. Oh, otj was full of ridiculous mm. convoluted you know modern horizons 3 was a real and they're great sets i loved modern horizons 3 dust sure. is fantastic but it's a complex set there's a lot going on and then you get foundations and it's almost like suddenly it's summer vacation and we can still, we can, we can draft, but we don't have to like study it so hard. We, it's just, it's lighthearted. It almost feels like, you know, I, I used to, I play a lot of first person shooters. It's like playing PUBG or, or Counter-Strike and it's super intense, you know, Call of Duty. And then I'm just going to play like Stardew Valley after just to <laughs> decompress, you know, that that's what it's exactly. like. It's like Stardew Valley of magic. It's just nice and chill. Because, you know, there's the nostalgia thing for me. When, when you talk sure. about Sarah Angel, it's a card I've been playing with for 30 years. I remember opening one in a, you know, starter box of Revised when I was a kid. And um, that, but that's yeah. me personally. I'm an old boomer mm -hmm. now in Magic. 
a lot of people who've started playing recently who've come into the game from Arena, they don't have the nostalgia for this card that I do, for Sarah Angel, for, you know, some of these other cards, well, Llanowar Elves, but... Yeah, yeah, maybe not, but um, they do have nostalgia for other cards that are in the set, like Brineborn Perhaps. Cutthroat. Which was like a big deal <laughs> a couple of years ago for players on Arena, and, you know. So anyway, sorry. Oh uh, really? I didn't yeah. even know. Oh yeah, maybe. Yeah, I see, the, I the Simic, see that the Simic that Flash deck from like four years ago was, you know, oh, this is a yeah, key piece of maybe. that, right? Okay. Anyway, yeah. Sure. So, so there's anyway. there's a little bit of nostalgia there, but like mm -hmm. I, I want to praise this set not for my subjective opinion <laughs> of me person. Me personally, it tugs on my you know, heartstrings a little bit. And I missed the core sets for that reason. It was it was nice every year around summertime. In the middle of the year, we'd get this core set. You know, for those of you who don't know, they, they printed core sets. Well, they printed core sets since the, the very first set of Magic. But, they, but it was around M10 that they started to get good for limited. That was around M10. Mm -hmm. I think that was pretty much the start of when they used... They, that's when they started designing core sets for limited. Before then, it was like there were cards like Blood Moon and Choke and like the, these like hater cards, you know, ensnaring bridge. And you're like, like, it was just not a great draft format. It wasn't designed for draft. And then mm -hmm. they started really putting effort into... And so they were good. The core sets were like, they weren't... You know, as amazing as Zendikar, or as uh, Zendikar, as uh, Cons of Tarkir, or, you know, Rise of the Eldrazi, or Innistrad, you know, some of these classics that a lot of people say are some of the best draft formats of all time. No core set's ever that high, but the but the floor is really high. The ceiling might not be as high as some other sets, but the floor is always, you know, they were fine. They were they were just, like, mm -hmm. chill, and, and it almost felt like, yeah, like a nice little break from the intensity of drafting the more complex sets, so... Um, all in all, I, I, I like it. It's been a great limited experience. I, I've drafted a bunch of stuff. I see a lot of people complain online. Not everybody. A lot of people like it, but there's many people going, what is this? You know, why? This, this feels like we're, like, it's so underpowered and there's everything so basic. And it's like, and I feel like shaking them and going, yes, that's the point. Like, <laughs> don't you understand? Not everything has to be super wordy and like with 15 spell book cards and, you know, mm -hmm. it's not all cube all the time, you know? It, it's good to draft a nice chill set. But I see Absolutely. a lot of people don't like that, you know, especially right after Dusk. Dustmourne was an all timer. A lot of people love Dustmourne. And I, I agree, yeah. it was a great limited set. So, but I think. Maybe that's why it's in Duskmorn's shadow. Foundation isn't getting the credit I think it's due from a lot of people for just being a good solid set, not only for constructed, mm -hmm. but for limited. Like, it's a great set to get people to learn how to draft. This is the set you want to introduce new players to limited, you know, with. Yes. With, with Foundations. And um, so I, I've liked it. It feels like, a, you know, just a nice little nostalgic throwback to limited magic days of yore. But uh, Heck yeah. I'm glad it's back. Yeah, I, I agreed. I also find it interesting that you mentioned, uh, you know, what uh, M10 specifically uh, or 10th yeah. edition, you know. Yeah, because uh, oh, yeah, a I lot of. It, yeah, right. Yeah. The, the 10th edition back in the day, because a lot of the cards, oh. you know, that that are in this set were in that one as well. You know, like we have Unsummoned, yeah. Deathmark, Time Stop, you know, like a lot oh, of yeah. these big, you know, a lot of the cards that are in Foundations. Well, and it's a core set. This is a new take on a core set. So of course we're going to see a lot of the same, uh, yeah. a lot of those same ones. And I think even like my, my, uh, my boy, Arcanus, the omnipotent, it was, or, you know, mm -hmm. the was printed in, uh, well, actually, I guess he was, he's been reprinted in a number of things, but 10th edition was a notable reprint for him. He as was well. in there. Yeah. He was yeah, in like Dominary remastered and a couple other things, but I won yeah. a, a big draft, uh, at a store championship with this, this card I got in, in draft. I love it. Someone passed it to yeah. me in pack two. Don't, don't pass Arcanus. Don't, or, uh, yeah, yeah. A, a, a creature that can, uh, that can ancestral recall on demand is pre and protect itself. Yeah. If you have open mana. Yeah, yeah. no, don't. triple blue yeah. though. So this poor person it's, next to me, I don't think was in blue and they were like, well, all right, hopefully yeah, this, well, so I have this guy's not yep. in blue. <laughs> uh, sure. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. but, but I love anyway, it. I yeah. think, um, you know, it, it, it's inspiring for a lot, like like Time Stop and, you know, a lot of these cards. Mm -hmm. They're not, like, super powerful. They're not even the most powerful versions of themselves. There's other cards no. that do these things maybe better. But these are the cards that new players see, and it gives them inspiration. This is what they mm -hmm. say, oh, like, this is what I saw as a kid, and it got the gears turning, and I was like, okay, I zombify. Yeah, I get what I'm supposed to mm -hmm. do here. Like, okay, or Time Stop or whatever, right? You're looking at these cards and going, like... You know, and hmm. those are the players that will eventually play super convoluted storm combo decks that are all, you know, down the road. But but this exactly. is the first step on that path. This is the, mm -hmm. the set that's supposed to show new players. This is why Magic's the best game ever invented. 
Look at all mm-hmm. the different ways you can play this game. There's, yeah. you can reanimate, you can mill people, you can do this, you can play control decks, there's sweeper, there's ramp, there's, you know, sacrifice effects that the aristocrat, like this guy that pays you off for doing this and aggressive cards. And this is what gives new players the eye-opening kind of, the, the little taste, the first taste of that exactly. addictive drug. You know what well, I mean? <laughs> yeah. And that's actually something that I think is really Yes, 100%. Like, everything you're saying is, uh, I think this, they they nailed it. Wizards understood the assignment yeah. with the set, and they crushed it. And uh, yeah. one card that I want to talk about that I think is going to open that for a lot of people, There, there's been a lot of chatter around one particular combo that you can actually draft in this set. Uh, and it's leveraging Marauding Blight Priest, which says whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. And Bloodthirsty Conqueror, oh. which is basically an exquisite blood effect, where whenever an opponent loses they life, loop. you gain life, and it creates an infinite loop. Yeah. If both of these are on the field, and your opponent, you know, loses life or you gain life, the game is over and you win. And um, this is one of those situations where it's a straight up two card combo that's in one color that is available in draft off of the back of a mythic and a yeah. common. You know, so like right. you need to get the mythic in order to pull it off. So th- that's a tall right. order to be sure. But if you have the mythic, finding the common is probably not going to be that tough, you know, um, in many right. cases. So and, and oh man, if you if you drafted like I've drafted a bunch of of the set now, and black white life gain is an awesome archetype. I had really some good. very powerful black white like uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know drain and gain. Like I'm, every time mm-hmm. you gain life, they lose a life, and there's a bunch of cards. There's a two drop that's a one three that attacks and drains them for one. Oh my! And, that, and the healer's hawk, and you've just got these yeah. bunch of really cheap ways to like mm-hmm. gain life. And then a bunch of gain life payoffs, and uh, yeah, it's sweet, because a lot of times, I don't know, I found that archetypes never quite come together, the black-white life gain Mm -hmm. deck. They've tried to do it in so many sets, and it just never hits. It's never good enough. Like, it's too hard to get all the pieces to come together. Mm -hmm. Too many of them are uncommon, or, you know, this guy's mythic, so... But that's good, because, yeah, I wouldn't want an infinite combo like that being easy to assemble easily available Uh, sure but a but being present i I saw a really interesting um argument presented for it actually on social media another good thing that social media is good for uh i believe it was kuro hitsuki pointed out this idea that bloodthirsty conqueror is a good thing to have in this set presenting your opponent or presenting a new player with the idea that sometimes when you put cards together, they create infinite loops is one of those moments Mm. that a brand new player might like their brain can like click and, you know, and all of a sudden the inspiration can start flowing and the intrigue is there. Like that can be a brand new player discovering that for the first time might be the moment when a lifelong magic fan is born, you know, it just like straight up. It just is. Um, yeah. You know, and, the, you know, for me back in the day, the thing that like where I realized I'm never not playing this game um, was, you know, the, the when I used a dark ritual to entomb an Acroma Angel of Wrath and, you know, and cast reanimate to bring it out on turn one before my opponent did anything. <laughs> when I the first yeah. time that that actually lined up and I actually pulled it off and my and, you know, my opponent, my buddy, we were just playing on like his bedroom floor. He was like, well, so you win this one. Can you want to move on to the next one? You and know, you're just and like. like like, <laughs> did anyone else see that? Oh my god! <laughs> and, and that's why I love reanimation strategies to this day. That was twenty years ago, you know. Yeah. Um, and so somebody could be a you know a life gain, uh, you know, a gain and drain sure. aficionado, or become a, like in you know fall in love with that archetype as a result of seeing this kind of a combo for the first right. time, you know. And I think that's a really yeah. cool thing, and I love that idea. Um. The fact that this is showing up at the same time is like we just had the bats deck in Bloomboro. Um, if there's ever a time when the gain drain is going to be well, viable yeah. and standard, maybe it's now. I've seen people try well, it, but we'll, yeah, yeah, I've seen people try it. There's a couple infinite combos you can do with this guy mm-hmm. in standard. Um, but yeah, there are a number of ways. A little, yeah, yeah, it's a little meme still because people say this every time a new card, like Blood Letter of Aklazots gets printed. People are like, "Oh my god, look at these!" You know, ridiculous. You can combo and mm-hmm. kill people. Rush of Dread got printed. It was like, "Oh, yep. here's a card that combos with Blood Letter." Blah blah blah. And it's like, yeah, but when you don't have these cards, they're not good. Like they don't right. stand alone. Blood Letter is not a great creature by itself. Mm-hmm. It's a four mana four four that's really hard to cast. That's it. That flies. <laughs> You now, know, Bloodthirsty Conqueror, dread, but... though, by itself, yeah, is no, a 5-5 five, five flying better. death toucher, and whenever an opponent loses life, you gain that much life. I mean, like, that's yeah. gonna... Pseudo like, lifelink, yeah, that by is By itself, that is good. that's decent, yep. I think. So, um... It's better than some of the it's other butter- cards like this, but... Right, because, yeah, yeah Bloodletter you know, blood we'll without support is a 2-4 demon. 
for four. Yeah, it's like yeah, neat. You know, like it's just sort of <laughs> you know, yeah. Well, okay, so we, you anyway. know, I've, I've I've sung the praises of this set enough. Now, yes, it w- but- well, it wouldn't be fair to, in my opinion, I always have to present the good with the bad. I there's everything always has two sides. Mm-hmm. There is an annoying aspect to foundations that I just haven't heard anybody talk about why Mm. they did this nobody can people have talked about this but nobody can seem to explain why wizards decided to print 300 cards into the booster packs that you draft with and everything else and then there's another whole bunch of cards that are part of foundations that don't appear in the packs they only appear in starter decks and this other stuff and we talked about this i think earlier but Mm -hmm. i don't know why they decided to do that that aspect of it is so uh, needlessly confusing especially for new players like right. you get a starter deck and the cards you get in that are not the same cards that are in the packs and then like people are playing different you know stuff and you're, but you're like wait a minute it's all mm-hmm. from foundations though yeah and it's like weird why why yeah. do they do this i i don't know i dislike that aspect of it it's almost like they, they had too many cards and they're like how are we gonna we can't have a 500 card set like what are we gonna do well i don't know put them in these other products or i i didn't I like that yeah. aspect of it but well, and but it's actually yeah. really interesting. There, I'm seeing a parallel there um, with another card out there that was actually just reprinted for the very first time in this set. Youthful Valkyrie was reprinted oh, in this yeah. set, which <clears throat> was a theme booster card. Um, which, if you're not familiar, if you're wondering, wait, what was a theme oh. booster? Exactly. That's why they stopped making them because they were a complete waste of everyone's time and money. Um, a theme I don't booster even was remember. basically yeah 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 exactly they were <laughs> it was in in call time um it, what they were doing at that time was when they released a new set they would include these theme boosters which were like 20 card packs that were effectively jumpstart right it was a kind of a predecessor to jumpstart they rebranded them to jumpstart you know dominaire united or whatever and they were just a mm. massive flop the whole time they just did like n- pairing that delivery method to a set was just a non-starter and thankfully they've cut Mm. them but one of the things they would do to give those packs some value is they would include cards that could only be found in those packs and couldn't be found in any of the other packs but all the standard legality was the same and the vast majority of those cards you could tell they intentionally made them very weak so that they wouldn't be money so uh, and therefore the value didn't drive those pack sales at all so it makes again makes you wonder why bother with one exception, yeah. Youthful Valkyrie. One three flyer for two mm. whenever another angel you control enters, you put a counter on it. And so the angel decks in, in Arena were, have been playing this for some time. And if you tried to yeah. purchase a copy in paper for like a commander deck or something like that, it was like $10. And it makes really? you wonder because this was doesn't look common? like it should be. A, on, it, well, it it's uncommon an uncommon in Foundations. I think yeah. yeah, it was it was it was marked as an uncommon in call time, oh, but it was okay. only available in those boosters. But, you yeah. couldn't you buy a normal call time set booster, I hate you that. we're not gonna find this. And and yeah. so and it created the scenario where this card that should have been a dollar at most, actually if this was a true uncommon, it'd be twenty cents. You know? Um Yeah. Well, but, it's like uh, the, the artificial scarcity yeah. thing. I mean, it, it's like Nexus scarcity. of Fate. You know, that was the the most egregious yep. example of that when they put the buy box promo and Nexus, and I had these like you know, Korean foil Nexus of Fates that were like, I, I don't know, 150 bucks. God, I should have sold them it's, <laughs> I didn't right, right. before they got it's banned. Silly. But it was it's such silly. a stupid, like, oh my God, and this card's so good. Yeah. And now we have to like, oh my God, why now, did you do this? You know, so yeah. the difference between this and the starter decks and foundations is, I think the price point is probably a little bit better. And the print run, I'm assuming, is significantly bigger than these like oh, yeah. tiny promotional things that were on Walmart shelves that didn't get any promotion. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So... I'm assuming well, and, that and, the, the influx of these cards will be significantly greater than something like Youthful Valkyrie or the buy a box promo in Nexus. Um, sure. But still, this notion that it's completely separate. Like, I think yeah. reprinting Youthful Valkyrie here is showing in an unofficial way because they'll never officially acknowledge the secondary market. Like, they understand we need to reprint these cards that have this, like, tiny little pipeline into production. Um, yeah. th- we understand this is an issue and we are we're doing something about it. Well, oh, but now we're going to do it with these other cards. <laughs> like, yeah, like my my what? my issue is not like we mentioned artificial scarcity, and that's a problem when it's a powerfully pushed rare that, right. you know, is going to see play. But. The issue here isn't the scarcity more than it's the confusion around, like, what is in Foundations and what isn't and how do I get these cards for new players. Like, for new players. This is the set for new players. And Mm -hmm. you make it deliberately confusing for them to figure out what's in this set. They open pack after pack after pack and go, wait, why am I not opening this stupid uncommon? 
and the shop owner goes, oh, you can't get it in there. What? I thought it was in foundations. It is, but not in the packs. Like, but, wait, what? Yeah. It's in the set, but not, how can it be in the set and not be in the packs? Well, it's just, that's why, I don't know. Well, and, and it's funny because, yeah, there's like the there's the foundation jumpstart set and those are pretty clearly yeah. marked with a separate set symbol. And so that's right. one of the where you, it's fairly straightforward and that one. OK, these are separate. Um, you know, if you want to get your Shrewfus commander deck set up or whatever, you got to go with the jumpstart packs. OK, great. We know this. Fine. Um, but it's funny, even in trying to find an example for this, I want to double check and make sure that I'm pulling up an example that's only in those starter decks. And even just sorting sorting through Scryfall, who we love Scryfall. They're great. They do a great job of cataloging everything and they're critical for, you know, with the stuff that folks like us do. I'm trying to identify which ones are in are in the actual boosters and which ones aren't. Like, I believe that Darksteel Colossus is in the starter deck, but not the, the packs. But I can be the wrong. Booster. I don't even... I'm not even confident of that. I haven't uh, like, seen I, one yet. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only and, way. And so I would know. if I if I have a starter deck and it has a Dark Seal Colossus in it, here I am. I I you know eat, sleep, and breathe magic, and I'm not even confident that I can tell you if you go out and buy a Foundations booster box, you have a chance of opening one of these. Like that yeah, chance may weird. be literally zero. And yeah. I'm not even confident. <laughs> That's the I don't case. like it, but it's, it's it, that I, is again, weird. I just can't. I don't know why they did it, but. Anyway, they are aware of it the secondary odd. market because, uh, like you, well, you mentioned, course. but MSRP yeah. is back. So, thank you. <laughs> yeah. But in, um, in Vegas, mm -hmm. that got the loudest cheer of anything yeah, the whole weekend when surprised. they announced that. The room exploded. Nice. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, people are very excited. Followed only by the SpongeBob reveal. Fun fact. Anyway, <clears throat> yeah. Oh my God. Which That's not. We have talked about You know about what? That. I was having a we great don't... day today. Don't bring SpongeBob <laughs> into magic. Don't. Hmm. To just let me i need to process okay i understand me... and right. i need to continue being a goofy goober so all right <laughs> <laughs> anyway um so that's foundations um that's foundations you know standard yeah. standards interesting foundations is a great limited set go out and draft it if you haven't um yes and god help you if you're trying to collect the whole thing and uh, <laughs> do we have anything else going on in the magic oh. world that we want to touch on you know those that definitely covers it um oh you know, one that I do believe, so I did have a couple of other decks that I didn't actually touch on because I've been brewing like crazy. I've been dabbling with Genesis Wave. It's super fun. Oh. Not good. Very <laughs> Mimi, yeah. but super fun. Oh, uh, yeah. Same is true with all the elves, the elf package. Creatures oh, are... Build elves? Yeah, I tried. I tried building elves. And funnily enough, elves with Genesis Wave actually pr plays pretty decent. But the sweepers, mm -hmm. sweepers are everywhere. De deadly, uh, yeah. what are the deadly cover up, cover up. and um, yeah. and sunfall are just sunfall. absolutely everywhere. So yeah. like the moment you're about to have the the dope turn, usually it falls flat. So I don't think it's going to be a thing, but it's exciting uh, that the pieces are here. And someday maybe someday the removal package will will falter a little bit, and maybe it'll have a chance. But for the moment, um, and then the I other one gotten that away actually, with it if it wasn't for I know. you pesky control players. <laughs> exactly. Like the Scooby-Doo villain. Exactly. Another deck that I believe is in the starter decks, you know, it's in it's in that starter collection that isn't in the main set, mm. Gates. So the oh, guild yeah. gates are, <laughs> right. are now standard legal alongside Maze's End. Maze's and End. Yeah. I have been swearing and ruining this, you know, uh, uh, about the Gates deck for the last five years on Arena. And to... Even when gates have been absolutely terrible in mm -hmm. Explorer, Historic, Timeless, wherever, in all those formats where gates has been just absolutely awful and no one's been playing them, if I dip my toe into those formats, I get paired against the gate deck and I get wrecked by it. That has been the yep. case for the last five years. Yes, even before Primetime showed up in Historic. So I've been absolutely hating yep. gates this whole time, but guess what just happened? I decided, screw it, I'm gonna build the standard gates deck and we're gonna see what happens. We don't have <laughs> oh, we don't have God. the guild summit, we don't have the gatebreaker ram. This is probably gonna be a really terrible version of it. And, and how I did loved it, go? it. I had oh, so God. much fun. <laughs> I'm so yeah, sorry, everyone. I, mean, I don't know what it happened. It is silly. It, it is a silly deck. I, I played against yeah many times when it was in Return well, to Ravnica and uh, that block. Well, and and right um, now, the reason that I think it's viable is the amount of like ways that we have to fetch non-basic lands we have like open the yeah. way we have the omen path journey we have all that all that stuff but then on top of that this deck can run no creatures or just the gate colossus as the only creature mm -hmm. and the reason that that's really really relevant is most decks right now are packing like 10 to 20 pieces of creature removal 
Yep. All of them are dead draws against this. It is shocking how relevant that is. The number of games where I've ended where oh, my yeah. opponent has had four cards in their hand for the last five turns, and I'm just and confident you know. they're all they're all yep. kill spells. Oh, it's brutal. So the yep. games are really long. It's grindy. But I had way more fun than I expected. Like, I need to accept that there's a little part of me. My inner control player was just you're, like... You're a little... Just, yeah, a little you're bit, a little control little player bit. there. I got, okay, you know, I need to good. accept that. Like, deep down inside, uh -huh. I need to do some self-reflection okay. and Embrace accept it. that... It's a I part of I, you. I might have to. Um, I might have to. <laughs> hey, it's there's funny. no greater... F I, I, love, I love control. You know, my favorite archetype, yeah. probably. The control and combo. And both of those archetypes are really fun because there's no greater feeling than beating an opponent and they still have seven cards or five cards or whatever in their mm -hmm. hand and they just can't do anything can't <laughs> you just, they, yep. yeah i love it it's great it, it does feel pretty good um, it's funny I've, I've been playing some other games as well and i find myself just gravitating towards the control archetype naturally like they're the ones that it's like yeah. i think that i think i like this better i think i like being able to do this and it's like well and in yeah, a lot of has, games what most, has the best most... removal this one let's go yeah, yeah. and, and mm -hmm. in a lot of games most players aren't like control is never the level one strategy in most games. Mm -hmm. Most games, the level one strategy is here is your way to attack, go nuts. Mm -hmm. It's like playing right. a fighter in D and D. Oh, you're new to D and D. Let's start you with a you know. Ba okay, it's gonna yeah, be easy to level up. You swing mm -hmm. these sharp things. That's basically what you do. <laughs> you don't want to start as attack? a you know cool. yeah. yeah as a sorcerer or a warlock or some mm -hmm. you know like a wizard. Like the, the, yeah, that, it's almost like control feels like yeah once you get to know a game or, or how games work and how resource management works in a lot of games and how you know yeah you're you're not expending resources early in order to stockpile them to do something huge later like this mm -hmm. kind of thing you can you can you know superimpose that kind of strategy on a lot of different games and it works um, yeah. You know, I play a lot of board games and we do there. There's always mm -hmm. a deck that's really obscure there. It, you know, because you see the signposts, just like in magic, there are other yep. games where you'll see like a, an ability or a card or whatever. And it's, and it's some weird, like defensive ability. You're like, and as a magic player, the first thing I think of is, huh, can I play like the walls deck here? Can I be like mm -hmm. a wall? Like, can I be a defensive instead of trying to win? I'm just going to mm -hmm. try and not lose the game. And mm -hmm. if I can just outlast all these other players, it's such a difficult position to assail. It's unassailable for, for a lot of other can be. opponents yeah. to, to beat because they're not expecting you to do that. They're expecting you to come mm -hmm. out swinging just like everybody else. And then you play this <laughs> weird like defensive game. It's, it's great. So totally yeah. hear you. And I, I love doing mm -hmm. it in, in a lot of my games as well. If, if the game designers you know make that a viable path yeah, to there's, victory right there, yeah. there's definitely a time when yeah there are plenty of scenarios where with ever new any new game you're feeling out you realize like oh no here that's yeah. just not viable or there's no big finisher at yeah. the top that can get me back into this yeah right but yeah but yeah. i've been i i, I need to cool. accept that there's a part of me that really yeah, appreciates fun. that. Well, and it's it's a benefit it's of knowing the metas and learning what's going on. Like, what's the most aggressive deck? What's yeah. the most successful deck? What's the best deck? Well, how do I build a build a deck that can consistently beat that or consistently stop that? And then we'll figure out everything else yeah. from there. Um, it's an interesting right. way to approach deck building and playing. Yeah, I, I'm looking. That's it. what makes it it makes it hard. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's why it's not. Yeah. You don't have to be smarter or better at the game. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of control players they like playing control because it makes them feel smart. Because you you feel like you're you know yeah, yeah you're I, seeing I the game like from that. a bigger. Yeah. I, I don't like that. That's not why mm -hmm. I love control. But um, but it is uh, I, I don't know. I, it's it's an unorthodox way to play the game. I think um, a lot of players you know yeah it's much more straightforward to kind of attack and stuff. So I I do like when players kind of mm -hmm. like realize that control is a good thing to have in a format i yeah, hear a lot of people hate on it like all i hear is counter spell oh you douchebag when my opponent leads with a basic island or a you know meticulous archive or whatever like back when you know blue eye control is thing but i just <laughs> right. i just leave the game you know and it's like oh my god dude i get it you don't like right. having your creatures killed you don't like it's sure, not even but you know p control players don't want to play the game they're trying to not let you do stuff it's like yeah but mm -hmm. that's kind of a good counterbalance to the decks that are just well, trying to kill you in three turns you know like it's not yeah it's and balance. i've actually been I've loved playing against control recently. As somebody who plays primarily yeah. mid-range or combo, I really love the challenge that control gives me. Like, if I'm playing a sure. goofy combo deck, an aggro deck isn't a challenge. We're in a race, you know? And like, mm -hmm. and that can be fine. That can be fun. And there might be some interesting, you know, positioning and interesting pieces of spot removal or whatever along the way. So mm -hmm. 
It's not that those games aren't enjoyable in their own right, but I find going up against a control player and trying to think through, okay, what answers do they have? What might they have in their hand? And uh, how likely is it that they have it, you know, and in game one versus post board and like those kind of things, it creates a different tension that I really like, which is why, you know, cards like, you know, one thing that actually I right now um, in standard, I'm not overly worried about a traditional kind of, you know, counter based control deck because we really don't have one. Um, But if we did, you know, as a reanimator player, uh, something like live or die all of a sudden would be really important because it's instant speed. You know, I've had a ton of fun playing cards like Smuggler Surprise against Control. You know, I've played a Grill deck oh. that could just eat Control alive because Smuggler Surprise is instant speed. You know, I'm going to cast it on mm-hmm. your end step oh, yeah. or on my end step after you tapped out for your draw spell. You know, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, being able to hit those timings, it, it, you have to think about the game differently. And, you know, live or die. Like, it's yeah. a reanimation spell. But it's instant speed. Instant if, speed, yeah. If, if a if a draw go control deck is is possible, being able to Valgavoth on my end step after you tap out for your draw spell, like that is one way yeah. to combat control in a real that just you just got to think about the game a little differently. You just got to approach it a little differently. Sure. You know, it's not that you don't get to play; it's that in order to succeed, you have to play, and that's something that I really yeah. like. I, I mean, love it. I guess yeah. the best way to exemplify, I, I I mean, I would rather watch two of the greatest magic players of all time play a control mirror than mm-hmm. I would have them play any other two decks. Like, I want to sure. see two really great magic players have a control mirror because they're going to have all the time in the world to make every decision matter and 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 do everything they, their deck does. And like, and it becomes this, you know, they have to think so far ahead because they know that they're going to have all the time and their opponent's going to be stockpiling resources for like these big turns later. And it just, oh, it's so, I, I it, various pro tours over the years, you know, there were there sure. were instances like this where there were, you know, two, um, Gabe Nassif versus, you know, and they're, they're playing a control mirror and you're like, oh man, this is going to be, and, and like you're watching it and it's hard to appreciate everything going on there mm-hmm. because there's so much like l- little things like which lands they fetch and what they're, the sequencing and like, and, and all of mm-hmm. it is building up to something that you can't see yet that you know, like they're thinking and the commentators are trying to figure them. out why yeah. did they do that, that mm-hmm. turn. That doesn't make sense. So what were they setting? And then three turns later, you're like, oh, and then you remember, oh, that's why he did this four turns ago. Like, oh my God. If they're playing a mono red mirror, that is not happening. Like there's none of that, you know? And it's just like, I mean, there's a little bit of back and forth and, you know. Yeah, yeah. and people playing at that level, you see more nuance in those matches than you would in many others. But, but yes, yeah, you're exactly right. It's interesting. So, yeah. Yeah. uh, And uh, uh, yeah. I love that you bring that up. I love that you mentioned tournament play because the moment when I stopped dismissing, you know, so I try not to not, I have tried to not do verbally dismiss control and like be outspoken against it in the past, even though I have been that guy who's rolling, it's you know, obnoxious. rolls my eyes at the counter spell. I, I get I, it. I, and, yeah. you know, and, and I try not to be that guy, but I absolutely have been. I have no doubt there are clips of me or whatever. If you dig up old VODs of me, you know, just, <laughs> you know, bitching and moaning about the third counter spell. I, yeah. Find some Twitter but, post. I know. Right? Yeah, probably. Actually, probably. Huh. Um, but, <laughs> but, um, another reason not to engage in social media, uh, the, the, tra- <laughs> the, the, the paper trail. But, um, one thing that really opened my eyes to it and I realized, oh no, this is actually really cool. There's something going on here, uh, was doing commentary for the pizza box. And I think it was during, mm. I'm trying to remember if it was an Explorer historic, I think it might've been a historic tournament. Um, and Azorius control was very popular, you know, Teferi hero of Dominaria, Azorius control. Mm. Yeah, and historic. Oh, wow. I think it was historic. It might've, it might've been Explorer. Um, but regardless mm. it was, we were watching anyway. these Azorius, you know, matches and we got an Azorius mirror and it was like the third round of the tournament or whatever. And I was doing the, doing the Swiss and, um, being in the commentator role, I yeah. couldn't like, it would be inappropriate for me to just be all like, well, viewers at home, I guess we're all going to be bored here for a minute as we just watch these two guys counter each other. You know, I, so Land I'm just doing my go, best. Like, yeah. my job here is to make this entertaining. And so it's like, well, let's try to figure out what is it that these players are thinking as they're going through these different lines and what's going yeah. on here. And in trying to articulate what was happening and get in the players' heads, I realized 
every single choice of land, every single, um, you know, the timing for draw spells, like watching people have like the impulse or whatever in their hand and choose not to cast it on their end step and instead just let, you know, and, and then wondering why, things, why did and they going, do that? Oh, it's like, what? well, oh, like, but if they had a counter spell or the opponent was able to set this up, then, you know, the idea yeah, that, oh, I mean, if the land yeah. was tapped, then all of a sudden their shields are down. And, you know, those nuances yeah. in the timing of it, I really learned to kind of appreciate the nuance of the control mirror by having to watch it as a commentator, you know, and having to yeah, narrate. That's it. interesting. And yeah, I, right. I really yeah, enjoyed totally. that. And that's one of those where um, if you, if you're of the opinion that the control mirror is just always boring, I highly recommend like finding a couple Play of, control. you know, and, well, and guess what else is boring? Starters. Yeah. Golf. Watch golf. It's the most <laughs> boring sport in the world. And then you learn how to play golf and you're like, Oh, and then you watch golf okay. and you're like, oh, wow, that was, okay, now I can appreciate a little bit more what's going on here. And, you know, mm -hmm. I'm a big soccer player. I played soccer my whole life. And all nice. my, you know, in Canada, nobody played, all my friends played hockey. And I played hockey in other sports too, but very few of my friends played soccer. And whenever soccer would come on, it was the most boring, oh, God, soccer. It's like back and forth. It's like low what? scoring and blah, blah, blah. But when I, like, as somebody who, like, loved soccer and my parents, like, family's so crazy about soccer and we what you watch brazil or some of the other teams play that are so good and you start mm -hmm. seeing what they're doing they're setting up these plays in advance it's like watching a magic player play a control deck right and yeah. it's, it almost gives you this appreciation like you start going oh okay i see yeah this is now it's much more enjoyable it's not boring because mm -hmm. i know what's going on so yeah if you do uh, not like certain <laughs> archetypes well you know what give it a try it's the the best inoculation 100%. against uh against hatred I, is exposure I, I love to yes Yes, yeah. Ooh, in all walks, in all forms of life. That, that's you a deep thought. I love it. Kill off biases, then um, exposure. And, Drag and it into fact, the light it, of of day. <laughs> yeah, and I had a similar experience with soccer, except it was uh, my buddy forcing me to play FIFA uh, on the Xbox. <laughs> you know, so I wasn't actually moving. Yeah. I was like, that did not get my heart rate up. But no. it took me like three or four games to actually score that first goal. But when I did, like, I was jumping around his living room like an idiot. It was great. Like, I just, you know. <laughs> The anticipation is anyway, but yes. So yeah, the nuance you you learn to appreciate try. it when you understand the game at least a little bit more. Yeah, you know, try so. try getting out of your yeah. comfort zone. Try playing Get a deck that zone. or yeah. an archetype that you don't like, that you don't respect. You think it's dumb, it's bad, whatever. Try it, try it. You might surprise yourself and um, learn to love Mazes End. Just do it. God like, trust me, it's when, when you actually fire the mazes end, like I'm at a point right now where actually I'm going to dig through my bulk and find each individual copy because I found myself spending way too much time just looking through like, okay, I'm going to activate it. Which one don't I have yet? And like counting through it was the whole thing. So, um, God. yeah, every if you want to lose friends quickly, play mazes end in, in commander and other. Is it banned in commander? No, it's a commander. Deck, no, right? it's not. I, the, it's, the, the, yeah. It's it's legal, yeah. Uh, I knew yeah. a guy who played Maze Zen all the time, and everybody's just like, dude, <laughs> don't, oh god, <laughs> I hate playing against it. I hate it. It's hard to interact with, right? Like, it there's is. not a lot. Like, if you're not playing an aggro deck that just smashes them to death before they can mm -hmm. do anything, then it's kind of annoying. It's hard to you know interact with it yeah. and beat or whatever. But uh, especially with anyway. all the ways that pe that we have to um, reanimate lands now, because like there yeah. are ways to yeah. pinpoint to remove a land. You know, you have demolition field, field of ruin, De all that jazz. Right. But yeah. When you have Aftermath Analyst or, you know, Luris or any mm -hmm. of these other cards that can, or, Lumbra. well, Luris doesn't, but um, anyway, there's so many. Lumbra that allow you to bring just, them all back. And, yep, yeah, that oh, just, yeah. yeah, all the splendid reclamation effects. Um, how do you, yeah. how do you exile a <laughs> land? It's like, well, you destroy it and then exile the graveyard, I guess. I don't, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's tough. Anyway. Yeah. But. Yep. Um, but anyway, so but lots anyway. going on in standard and um, standard? I think we had a good discussion about foundations. We awesome. pr pretty yeah. much covered everything with to do with foundations. Um, do we? Well, if, if there's nothing else, I, I, I don't have a question of the week this week. Did you come up with anything? You know, um, off the top of my head. So. So no, <laughs> if you're off well, the top no, of I don't. Head, I don't have one no. in the. I don't have one in the chamber. But okay. now that we've seen foundations, I don't have an answer to this question. Oh. So I want to kick it to you and think through something quickly, hopefully. <laughs> okay. Um, now that we know, you know, I feel like the last time you and, you and I talked, uh, we were still kind of waiting for the full uh, spoiler, if I'm recalling correctly. Um, what cards yeah, were know. not in foundations that you think could have been that oh. would have been decent? Oh, easy. My number yeah? one, not even close. I, I, I'm, yeah, and it's not in this set. Uh, Celestial Purge. Celestial Purge would have been so good for standard right now. There's black's the best color in the format. Ooh. It's been the best color for a while. 
and just giving an instant speed doom blade for any black creature exiling unholy annex at instant speed on their second main before they can trigger it exiling uh you know liliana exiling like uh, glissa like there's a million black cards that this would be so good against they did give us something like this it's a sorcery speed i i think in foundations there's a um and of course i can't remember the name of it but there, there is something like this i think they gave us some kind of sideboard like or you know one of these niche cards like flash freeze right. like this kind of thing I, when I saw Flash Freeze and Deathmark, I'm like, okay, great. They're going to give us the whole, like, give us one for each, you know, color pair. But no Celestial Purge. What? This would have been such a good add to Standard right now. But, mm -hmm. of course, like, they, they couldn't have predicted how good Black was going to be. Like, they, they print these things, you know, year well, ahead it, time. Or and this, this answers all of those, all the Black Threats and Heartfire Hero. Like that's that's oh yeah oh, red too yeah goodness. it would uh, leyline like, of resurgence and whatever you want like you know how yeah. good this would be to keep leyline in check if you could just get rid of it on turn two like that's a blowout so that's good that's insane yep. so any, anyway I, I yeah I, uh, good shot I feel like this was such a miss I can't believe they didn't put celestial purge in there, there but I God there is one I, I've got to look this up it's gonna drive yeah me. you you tell me yours I'm gonna find yeah. this there is a white card that does do something like this, but yeah. So one that I would like to see that I think I would love to see it in, honestly, like I, it has only appeared once. It is not a money mm -hmm. card, but I believe it should exist at all times forever. Although given their current design philosophy, it probably doesn't have to the elder spell. This was in war of the spark. Oh, it's never been yeah. a money card, but it's a sorcery for two destroy any number of target planeswalkers. Tuesday a planeswalker. You control put two loyalty counters on it for each planeswalker destroyed this way. Even if they were yeah. to modify this. So it's just a sorcery for two that says destroy all planeswalkers. Like, that's ultimately something yeah. that I would like to see. I feel like a, yeah. a reprint of this. It, it the way that this was built, you do have some kind of flexibility because you don't have to, you know, hit your own. It could be asymmetrical and you have the opportunity mm. to power up your planeswalkers by destroying your opponents. OK, that's kind of cute. But at the end of the day, having a planeswalker sweeper in the sideboard, I think is something that would be decent. Now, mm. that said, Wizards has, you know, made a point to the point where they're they stri stripped planeswalkers of their spark in the story. Uh, so they're probably not going to yeah. be printing planeswalkers moving forward. Uh, so maybe that's not as important. Uh, and so yeah. we should go with my my other one that I absolutely adore, which is Aether Snap, oh. which is do, does basically the same thing, except it does a lot more as well. Oh. Aether Snap's another one that I absolutely adore. At the end of the day, it's a sweeper that can oh. hit all the planeswalkers. Is ultimately what I like. But it says it's a sorcery for three black black. Remove all counters from all permanents and exile all hmm. tokens. So can you, along <laughs> alongside the overlords, this would be dumb, like crazy Dude, dumb. Can yeah. you imagine how good this would be against Archfiend of the Dross? Just citing this in and oh, you lose the game. <laughs> Straight up. Or that uh, yeah. would be it's like, ridiculous. It'd be, in, it'd be insane. It also removes yeah. tokens. I, I've had it with um, you know, I, I've used it alongside battles because it just auto flips battles. Like I have a commander oh, yeah. deck built around right. battles that has this in it, and it's great when it works. It's like, yeah, I'm just gonna yeah. cast these four spells for free off this. Yeah. You know what? That that reminds me. That's that's another miss, or I don't know. They said when battles first came out, they they said this is a new type. This is the first new mm -hmm. type we've had in so many years, and everybody made a big deal out of it. And they said we're gonna see battles going forward. We're gonna see this is not just a one set mechanic. This is gonna right. be in multiple sets. What? Where are the battles? I haven't we're, seen a we're, single we're battle. Like what? What are we gonna have? Yeah, oh, we're, you know we're here a year later, and we still haven't seen any Spider Man. Yep. Final Fantasy. I bet you those universes beyond things are going to be full of battles. Because that's the one permanent type that actually fits with those that lore. You know what I mean? Sure. We were joking about, like, how do, what, how do you make an enchantment in the Spider-Man set? Like, I was joking about Aunt May's house or whatever being an enchantment. <laughs> but that's so dumb. That doesn't even... It's a, An enchantment is a magical weaving. Some kind of, mm -hmm. you know... That's how I envision it. A bit like, you know, but, but, but the Spider-Man universe has nothing. There. How do you fit an enchantment in there? Well, battles. Battles actually would be a perfect thing because that's all comic book characters do is battle. So do. I think we might see more, but I'm kind of like, what happened to battles? They just like stop. Like, I think, have we seen one or two maybe? I don't even know. What? There's a well, couple no, sets the, now. Bloombro didn't have any. Dustmore nope. didn't have any. Like, And we haven't seen uh, any of the supplemental TJ. sets either. It was just March of the Machine yeah. the last time we saw them. Yeah. Right? Has there been any? There hasn't been any other random one of battle. No. Nope. Because they said, well, oh, you are might see them pop up here and there, and we haven't seen any, so where are they, you know? Yeah, and on top Fox of that, they specifically, the ones that we have um, are sieges, is the type. And they said, oh, this is just one type of battle. 
Oh but, yeah. But what are That's the right. other? I forgot about that. What are the other types of battles? Yeah. You know, right. I'm assuming they're in development. I'm assuming they have ideas. Um, you know, a lot of people talked uh, about Lord of the Rings not having battles. You know, like the Battle of Pelennor yeah. Fields wasn't a card totally. in Lord of the Rings. The Battle yeah. of Helm's, Helm's Deep wasn't Deep. a card. Like, yeah. how are these not cards? Um, you know, I'm assuming the development timelines on that didn't line up correctly or whatever. And, like, that's one of those where Could it's be. like, okay, I, they work years in advance. I can totally accept the idea that maybe battles weren't, um, you know, properly baked b by the time they were deep into development of Lord of the Rings. All right, whatever. Um, but, yeah, with these new yeah. ones, maybe. That would actually would make sense. Although, could you – So would they yeah. print a whole set that doesn't have an enchantment in it? That'd be that'd be wild. Has that ever but happened? I don't know. It's probably, probably happened, but right? Yeah, there, there have been some I don't know. interesting sets over the years. That's yeah. yeah. I'm definitely curious now. So anyway, like yeah. cards that they maybe could have put in foundations. It would have been cool to see a couple of battles. Yeah. Maybe especially this is a foundation set. Like you want to, you know, they put all these other mechanics in there, and like you know, I, just, I don't know. It just kind of says maybe yeah, battles aren't a, a foundational thing. Like they don't want it to be mm -hmm. that common. Maybe or, but yeah, they might not. Why, been... why make a new type? Then, but it's a new type honestly, of card. I know? I like. I thought battles actually played very well, and I'm not just yeah, saying I that as somebody right. who, you know, I don't know. I just, agree. The tension of you know your combat damage is a is a valuable resource, and the idea that you can spend mm -hmm. that to cast spells is kind of interesting. And like planeswalkers yeah. divert it already in an interesting way, but being able to do it proactively with battles was, I don't I don't know. Well, I, I liked like it. I thought it played well. Yeah, and yeah. I think Planeswalkers were a mistake. Like, I think when they started mm -hmm. printing Planeswalkers, they, you know, were onto something and they really wanted to push them at one point. And yeah, we saw War of the Spark and, you know, you mentioned the Elder Spell. That's why like, that I, card yeah. is, it was, I, I remember playing in Standard and this card came mm -hmm. in out of the sideboard. It was never main deck, but you would bring it in out of the sideboard. There were decks, but, but the only reason you would do that is because there were decks playing, um, uh, Return of the Dread Horde, Command the Dread Horde, Command the Dread Horde, which yep. brought all the Planeswalkers back. And that, like, the only way to beat that was to play something like Elder Spell. But now they've realized right. Planeswalkers are too good. They they snowball, and, you know, they, 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 they the, the, because they, they snowball and win the game by themselves, the whole game gets warped and suddenly becomes mm -hmm. all about the Planeswalker. And um, you either have to kill their Planeswalker or you're going to lose to it, right? And, mm -hmm. um, I guess I feel like, you know, they realized at some point, yeah, this is not good. Sagas are a better planeswalker. Like, sagas are what planeswalkers yeah. should have been, where it comes down, it does a thing, does another thing, maybe does one more thing, and then that's it. It's done. Yep. It doesn't just sit there and keep going. It, 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 like, planeswalkers are like a saga that never ends, and it just keeps chapter <laughs> after chapter after chapter. That's not, that's too good. Sagas mm -hmm. are kind of what planeswalkers should have been. And I feel like battles are the same thing. They're like a, mm -hmm. you know, a thing that comes down, does something, and then, yeah, you get this next level. Um, you do have to put in another resource, so to mm -hmm. speak, like the damage that you were mentioning, which I like. Like, sagas don't require yeah. you to usually spend more resources, but um, I suppose some do. Uh, the 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 level up ones, I, I really like the... the um, oh, the classes. You know, yeah. the talents. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. The classes, it's the talents in Bloomborough. Mm -hmm. Like, those are interesting, too, but they're a little bit different because, again, Planeswalkers required nothing of you. You just tick them up. And sagas don't require anything of you. They just tick up. But yeah. battles and level up enchantments, like the classes and the talents, mm -hmm. are a little bit different. They require something. But yeah, I like this. Like this. And you don't have to cash it in right away. You can let it sit there and kind of like when it's appropriate, when you have yeah. the mana, when you have the time, you, you kind of, you know, expend those resources. Um, mm -hmm. Battles, same thing. Yeah. Like, I, I think they're good. Yeah. Which is, again, bringing me back to my point. I'm, I'm surprised we didn't see any um any battles we haven't seen any battles at all in any of the sets yeah after they said that it was like a big deal and they're going to be everywhere or not everywhere but we're going to see them again it's but, like when yeah they made it clear that this anyway. is a new type that we will support moving forward and we might introduce new yeah. types of battles that play differently and yeah, yeah. um yeah even in the commander we'll products see. we haven't seen any new battles which is kind of weird you know i would imagine like yeah. a, a battle that was a a, a siege where the player who dealt the last point of damage gets to cast the spell or something like a free for all battle. I don't know. Maybe sure. that would play really poorly, but I think yeah. it could be fun. I don't know. Well, like, yeah, yeah. It's an interesting design know. space. You know, they, they, it opens right. up a whole like design space for like things like you're describing. So mm -hmm. it's weird to see them not lean into it, but we'll see. Maybe, yeah. um, maybe we will see that. I think, yeah, I think we're going to start seeing a lot more once these universes beyond set starts coming out, you know, fast and furious three a year. Yeah, and come to think of it, were there any sagas in Foundations? I don't think there were. 
Yeah, uh, I don't believe don't we got any so. I don't a think, single saga, which no. I would personally have loved to see Binding the Old yeah, Gods in there because I just I love, I love that card. It's just it's Me just too. Good. I played it. It a lot. just does what it does. Great. Um, so that would have yeah. been cool, but uh, I can also understand a core set not having something, not having a card type that carries kind of the uh, the complex. additional baggage of how, yeah. you know resolving a saga. So okay, it's relatively simple, but still, I can appreciate the idea that they didn't want to add more of those than they had to. So okay, yeah. yeah. Anyway. anyway, but uh, yeah, yeah, so we'll see. I think there was a couple of cards they they could have probably put in the set and it would have been better mm-hmm. but um um I mean, you know they did that overall, and this set's still fine yeah yeah, yeah overall they did overall, a great job so i, I certainly did not yeah. mean that question as a way of you know throwing shade or anything yeah. i just was thinking of finding some cool other yeah. you know other cards that could have been included at the end of the day it's yep. still 300 plus cards so you know yeah. and in general they nailed it like they did a great job I'm, i can't think yeah. of a card in here that i think is genuinely a bad include i don't know omniscience is a foundational piece of standard um, is a bold choice. Um, I think Llanowar know. Elves is the the cra- the Llanowar Elves is the the best card in the set. It's the most powerful you know card. I think they they put in the set. Yeah, and it's almost to the point where it's too powerful. Like when they first spoiled it, it was one of the first cards they spoiled, and everybody went, "Wow!" Whoa. Like I guess a lot of us thought at some point they're going to put this back into standard, right? But then yeah, I but don't I, know. Like yeah. Yeah, but in the foundation you... set, like that's is a bold statement. Yeah. Also, just pointed out the yeah. uh, the anime style, which I'm showing online for the viewer or for the um the video <laughs> viewers, uh, is available on Arena for a thousand gold. Uh, so I definitely went out and purchased it because that's it costs almost nothing. And now every time I cast it, I can say go. it's the Lanuwu Elves, uh, because I'm first. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> and with that, anyway. the show's over. Let's show. So it yes, down. thank you everybody for tuning in. We appreciate feel... you. <laughs> <laughs> Lanuwu Elves. You heard Lanuwu it here first. Elves. Yep, excellent. But yes, so uh, so you got anything coming up that you want to, to let the people know before we let them go? Oh. Uh, nope. Just yeah, stream it every day. Uh, come join me on uh, on Twitch at Damien F sixteen and uh, YouTube videos coming out all the time. I've got to start uh, putting out some some more standard constructed. I've been doing a bunch of draft videos and stuff. Was drafting Arena Cube. Could talk all about Arena Cube as well. But uh, then Foundations came out. Been doing a bunch of that. So. Bunch of limited content up there, as well as all the other games I play on my second YouTube channel, Damien F16 on YouTube and Damien F16 underscore Magic on YouTube for the YouTube channel. Um, and I'm on Blue Sky now, I guess. Whoa. So Damien F16 no just put a couple pictures from Seattle. Actually, I wasn't. You know, it's funny as an aside here. I, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm on the Blue Sky. I, I'm gonna post a, you know, question and just say, hey, I'm I'm going to Seattle, right? I went to Seattle this weekend. Never been there. Any good places to eat? I got like eight replies in a row of just like recommendation after recommendation after like all these things. And I'm just like, oh my God. I'm like, okay, that's way more than I was expecting. I almost feel bad. I can't go to all these places. Some people, Mm -hmm. I don't want to feel make. I'm only there for two days, but I appreciate (laughs) that. It was in two days. Yeah. that's. (laughs) Anyway, if you want to come, uh, you know, message me and uh, tell me control is bad or whatever. No problem. Damien F16 on blue sky. I'm always there. My ears are always, you know, open i will i will hear your criticisms love it how about you have? yes what, what do you i'm also these days? over on blue sky i'm also doing the youtube thing um you know i also need to put together some standard constructed uh because i have so many weird uh deck ideas but they're primarily showcased over on twitch twitch.tv slash hammocks 42 i also am doing write-ups mm-hmm. for them uh ones that are working so mm-hmm. actually the day that we're recording this i did put up a uh, a list and a write-up explaining my my thought process around uh my galgari reanimator deck that we discussed earlier so if you want to see that that's available over on mtgcircle.com uh there's a detailed article there and of course the thumbnail is zombify what else would it be so yeah i mean yeah naturally so yeah uh yeah all the places there are links in the description and actually if you're watching here uh if you're watching on youtube some some links including to you know damien's magic channel and whatnot will be showing up in just a moment so definitely stay tuned for that and in the meantime be good to each other and all that jazz and we'll we'll catch you on the next one bye